Well, good evening, good morning, and good day, wherever you are in the world. For any of you watching live, thanks very much for tuning in. For anyone watching on repeat after the afterwards, uh, again, thanks for uh, thanks for downloading. This is the ultimate hacks for e-commerce sellers, and it's season three after two fabulously successful early uh, episodes uh, where we were able to divulge dozens and dozens of really useful nitty gritty uh, e-commerce hacks. Uh, for people who are for people, individuals and businesses who's selling online. So here we are, Q3 2023. This is season three, and we have around 22 really talented individuals uh, on the show today. Real thought leaders in their fields who have got some very useful uh, uh, bits and pieces to relay to you. So here's the deal of how things are going to work. We're going to run through, and each of the uh, each each of our experts are going to give you their e-commerce uh, tips, tricks, and hacks. One uh, one per person. Uh, they're going to deliver them in about five minutes each. We'll run fast and furious uh, through each of them, and then that's going to be followed up with a very mighty white paper. It's finished, and it's a much much more in-depth guide of how you do that and how you can make use of the hack. Now, one thing is to note, all the people on the hack series tonight, as I mentioned, they're thought leaders in their fields, uh, and they really have got lots of good uh, things to say. So there's a QR code on each slide relevant to each uh, of our experts. Uh, that QR code will open their LinkedIn profile, and I urge you to connect with those people, make yourself some new connections tonight, uh, and in your feed, you'll be getting some really good, valid content uh, and, and and really growing your connections. So please urge you, if you're an e-commerce entrepreneur, if you're running an e-commerce business, please urge you, connect to these guys. They are absolutely uh, thought leaders in their field when it comes to running their own businesses, the businesses that they're involved with, and their history within the industry. So <clears throat> let's tell you a little bit about us. Initially, um, this event is run by uh, Global E-Commerce Experts. Uh, my name is Ricky Hooker. I'm your host for today. I'll be hosting the group, uh, and I'm the general manager here at GE. Uh, many of you over who are watching this will have already have seen our content and the other hack series that we've done. We uh, spend a lot of time creating content for the industry to help uh, e-commerce sellers to grow internationally. Global e-commerce experts exists just to do that, to grow e-commerce sellers into the UK and the EU. We do that by a range of uh, services all bundled together that gives you compliance, 3PL, and then online distribution. Everything you need to get set up, tax compliance, label compliance, everything you need to bring your goods into the region, uh, and everything you need to, to optimize those things going back out. So a one-stop shop to be able to uh, grow your business to half a billion odd Europeans. If you lay those services which allow you to sell on top of the 22 odd services um, uh, that include both here in the UK, Europe, and further afield, as you'll see from some of the from the other um, uh, tips and tricks that are coming through in the next couple of hours, you'll really get a gist of how you can layer these benefits on top of each other, save money, grow sales, and optimize your opportunity online. So we're going to get kicked off. Some of you may know Vincenzo. Uh, Vincenzo is a legend in his own right. So I'm just going to add him into the stream now. Vincenzo, you thank you for joining us. How are you? Good, good. I'm doing great. What about yourself? See, I'm very good. Very good. You need to you absolutely you need to make sure you follow Vincenzo's EcomC uh, channel uh, and and pick up and soak up some of the stuff that comes out. is really very very cool. Uh, but without further ado. Vincenzo, I'm going to leave you to uh, talk about search query performance reporting. Uh, you got your five minute pitch, and all the details will be in the white paper. Sure. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Rick. It's, it's a pleasure for being here on, on the show. So, yes, uh, my name is Vincenzo, founder and CEO of Ecomsi, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how you can leverage the search query performance report. I think this report is super important when it comes, especially during the launch phase of your product, because it's gonna allow you to identify which are the keywords you should be focusing on when it comes to first listing optimization, and second, when it comes to the advertisement to PPC. So something that we do uh, very often with the search query performance report is that we basically run the search query report on, on your product and the search query report basically allows you to identify which are the keywords that have the highest search query score uh, 
of course, by Amazon looking at the historical data against your product. So what you can do with this data, you can find which are the keywords that are the highest in terms of score, are the most relevant, and you can and you need to make sure that these uh, keywords have a basically presence on your listing. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you leverage uh, the keywords actually that have the biggest conversion rate uh, by basically looking the funnel from impressions click to purchase. Because if you identify a keyword that has the biggest uh, conversion in terms of impressions, it clicks um, uh, um, and add to cart and the whole funnel, you want to make sure you have them on your title. So you have the biggest weight towards that specific keyword. On top of that, what you also want to do with the search query report, you want to basically compare your product against the competition, especially when you do PPC. A big mistake I do I see actually when people do a launching on Amazon is that when they launch and target specific keywords, they don't the only thing they care about is sales. And the big mistake with that is, is if you only focus on sales in the long term, you're not gonna stick what we call the landing on page one. Because some of the number one metrics that Amazon takes in consideration to actually stick the landing organically is your conversion rate against the competition. So with the search query performance report, what you can do is you can compare how you compare against the competition at the keyword level. And if you identify that a specific keyword level, you're performing more uh, basically poorly in terms of the conversion, in terms of um, impressions, clicks, and purchases, then you need to understand why you're doing wrong. Most of the time, the issue is something to do with the creative of the listing, the actual copy itself, or pricing. But the goal here is that you want to keep close eye on everything that you do with the search query performance report to make sure that you keep the standard in terms of the KPIs around your conversions as close or even higher than the standards of where your competitors are. Now I'm going to be talking about some of the best practices when it comes to the search query performance report. You want to make sure that always you keep an eye this usually we do on a monthly basis. You can do this on a quarterly, monthly and weekly basis. Every month you want to run this report. You want to see if you identify new keywords within the search query and you want to make sure that the most relevant keywords for your product you always have them on your listing and you're actually targeting them uh, by PPC. On top of that, the other thing that you also want to make sure with the search query uh, performance reward is that you want to find long tail keywords. Sometimes you may find keywords that are not super relevant uh, to your product, but still by looking at the search query report, you're getting impressions, you're getting add to cards and you're getting purchases and you want to leverage that. And on top of that, the other thing that you want to do with the search query um, performance report, um, and this actually is more within the brand analytics thing, is that you also uh, want to have a look at something that I call the um, market basket analysis. This one is more within the brand analytics. Uh, and the nice thing that you can do is that if you find synergies between your product and other pros within your catalog, you can basically create virtual bundles or if you find synergy between your product and other competitor products or accessories, you can use that data to actually do product targeting on top of those uh, products. Uh, just to quickly go back to search query performance report and just jumping around very uh, fast to make it as much value as possible to you. Another thing that you can do, you can find seasonal keywords. You can go back up to plus one year, I mean, as much data and as long as the listings be in your account. And you can see what has been working during Prime Day, uh, Valentine's Day. Christmas, et cetera, and you can find seasonal keywords that were performing during a specific pe period, and then you can prepare for the next season by basically using that data on, on your PPC campaigns and so on. The last thing I would also add as an added bonus here when it comes to uh, another strategy that you can do, leverage a prod, um, ex a, plur a prod opportunity explorer tool, right? This is also part of, it's outside the brand analytics, but it's within the brand feature you get as being a brand within Amazon. And here you can also leverage opportunities such as finding what are some of the uh, keywords that are, are more trending with a specific niche that is new. You can use those keywords for also towards your launch. And on top of that, with the product explorer, you can also find specific trends within your specific category to identify maybe gaps in terms of accessories, maybe variations that you haven't thought otherwise. And you can even see how the market is being performing. So you can leverage that as well to launch um, new products within your brand. So I think that will cover the whole search query performance report as efficiently as possible. Of course, once you get the uh, white paper, this is going to go much more in depth. 
But yes, make sure you leverage this and you use it at least on a monthly basis. We use it for other clients and we use it for listing optimization and we use it for PPC. And it's key that you always keep an eye on your metrics because if you're sleeping on certain conversion, that is what usually uh, lead to what we call uh, the organic um, ranking. And another bonus just came to my mind. If you're looking at your whole funnel, uh, impressions, clicks, add to cart, and purchases, if it's usually going from a small number in terms of impressions and higher and higher and higher, usually that's a big signal that you should be increasing your PPC spend because that means down the funnel, pe people is converting higher. If it's opposite, that means you have a lot of impressions but not a lot of people buy at the bottom of the funnel. That usually means you have a, a, a conversion issue. Change the images, the, teeth, the title, pricing. And this is something that also the search query performance report can give you. So I think I did a big bump there. So that should cover a lot of things. <laughs> it turns out it was great. That really gives us an indication. So search query performance reports. You need to see it in the white paper. Uh, Vincenzo, thank you so much. Uh, no that's the first hack. Uh, and that certainly helps people with those long tail keywords to get the ball rolling with their Amazon sales. Pleasure. So, thank you. Thank you very much, Vincenzo. Moving swiftly on, next up, this is a really good one. We're going further afield than even GE does. Uh, this is a uh, an additional um, bit of info here in terms of moving towards the Japanese Japanese market. Dano, thank you very much for joining us. And just to add here, Dano arrived one hour early for this web this with this webinar, <laughs> so he's been sitting in the green room for an hour now. So, uh, dude, you are so ready. So, uh, I'm going to add your slides to have a quick whistle through, and we'd love to hear about the potential of the enormous marketplace of Amazon in Japan. Yeah, thanks, man. Thanks, Ricky. Thanks for having me. Uh, the, yeah, my presentation is about Amazon Japan and its potential. So, there's a lot of potential. Uh, just a quick one about myself. I am Dano Falk. I'm the founder of Dev Device, located in Malaysia. Japanese culture is something that we need to consider when we start looking at Amazon Japan, which is a huge opportunity. So it's very different from what we are familiar with. Uh, so one of the things Japanese people like to do, it's they have a very strong emphasis on politeness, respect, and hierarchy then the Japanese society values group harmony called VA and emphasizes collective well-being over individual desires. Uh, we have this concept of saving face, you know, so people would like to avoid embarrassment, confrontation and causing discomfort in others, uh, and others and others is heavily valued. Uh, appreciation of nature and seasonal changes is deeply ingrained in Japanese culture. And then, of course, anime, we are familiar with all these funky cartoons. So this is one a big one which we have to be aware of. Um, Japanese language is uh, has been heavily influenced by Chinese over the centuries, especially in the areas of vocabulary and writing systems. And there are three uh, scripts which are being used in Japanese and in including, and it also, they, they also write in English. So there's actually four scripts being used in Japanese language. So let's say if you were selling Tokyo, which would be funny, there were three ways to spell Tokyo. So they have these three scripts and they could even spell it in English as well. So there would basically be like four versions of, of writing down the same thing. Uh, a quick uh, running, um, so uh, just a quick look at the holidays, another big cultural difference between Western cultures and, uh, and Japan. So, uh, you know, as you can, I can tell, if in the hierarchy of all the holidays in Japan, uh, Christmas doesn't even show up. So they have a completely different set of holidays compared to European or Western cultures. Uh, let's look at uh, just a few numbers here. The population is 123 million. Uh, we have a disposable income uh, of 32K. Uh, we have a high GDP per capita. Less than 30% of Japanese people speak English. So that's uh, one very important part to remember. And the ethnic groups, 98% of Japanese people are actually Japanese as like compared to US. Uh, the biggest ethnic group in the United States is actually the Germans. I didn't know that, which is quite funny. Uh, so 
let's look um, yeah just uh, the final one on the on the culture part ecom e-commerce marketplaces number one is actually amazon with uh, 597 million users per month second is rakuten and then there come the yahoos uh, uh, and then uh, so amazon as you can see is the top marketplace in uh, japan right now so that brings us to uh, the opportunities that amazon japan opens for us so number one is the marketplace size obviously they are like uh, over 124 million people it's the biggest marketplace uh, they have a high gdp per capita they have a cultural affinity for online shopping there's appreciation for western goods culture and brands so positioning yourself as a western brand can actually be a good idea there's proximity to china so if you are shipping from china your shipping cost your shipping time will be a fraction of what you normally have when you ship to the united states or to europe um, and also if your competitors right now that you're competing with on other marketplaces are not present yet in japan uh, then there would be a big opportunity for you to to be the first uh, in you know on, on this marketplace Let's look at the challenges here. So this, these are some magazine covers, you know, from Japan. And as you can see, it's, they look very different from what we are familiar with in terms of design, in terms of language, like oh, it, it's, it, it looks really crowded and, and really different from what we're used to. So when it comes to creating listings, of course, uh, we have to kind of take all this into consideration. Uh, in terms of keyword research, the listing copy, infographics. So all these things have to kind of reflect the fact that uh, Japanese culture is very different. There are import regulations. So uh, a lot of uh, categories are uh, restricted. So we have to apply uh, for food related products, for cutlery, for health products and so forth. So we have to kind of keep that in mind that there's a kind of an, a process of application that we have to go through. Driving external traffic can be a bit of a challenge. So most Western brands would have their brand website, their social media presence, and they can simply like uh, with a push of, push of a button, we can drive uh, like, like paid traffic uh, or we can do SEO and we can drive external traffic to our Amazon listing. That is not that simple in in japan so we we have to create this presence in japanese which also ha is a certain challenge and then there are some more top, uh, topics to consider like trademark uh, the importer of records so we need to have an importer of record um, and we have to also consider to create a localized version of our packaging and of our inserts and of our manuals so people in japan can actually read how to use our products um, but the good news is we don't have to create a japanese company the, the japanese entity like for example in india we don't need that so we we can still we can sell as an external entity without opening a company in japan so to summarize all this so if i would start selling in japan right now this would be kind of my roadmap. I would do some market research. I would check the import regulations for my brand, for my products. Um, I would uh, look for trademark approval. I would, uh, I would uh, acquire an importer of record. Uh, I would maybe get a 3PL partner who would store my stuff uh, in Japan, uh, create my listings, uh, send my inventory, set up my PPC campaigns and then start with my off uh, Amazon presence. That's about it. And this is how we can help you at devdevice.com. Thank you very much. Danny, thank you so much. That's uh, an amazing uh, quick run through. And, and actually, there's so many different similarities between growing in different countries around the world and those kind of fundamental building blocks of getting yourself compliant, getting those, yeah. getting the kind of architecture of how you're going to do it bringing, you know, how are you going to get your cash home? How are you going to optimize your sales within that particular country? How are you going to be become, uh, you know, the national to that uh, particular region? These things are the same all around the world and they're replicatable. You know, they're, you, once you've yeah. done one and you started exporting, you can really crank. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to move the slides back to 
uh, get us back into the game. So thank you very much for joining us and hope to see you again in the future. Everyone, uh, hopefully be able to get your LinkedIn profile from off of that QR code. So moving on, we are whistling along. Uh, We're into tax now. So there's only one person. uh, There's a few people, but there's only one person that I know who can make tax call. And that is, of course, the mighty Nick. So we're going to bring in Nick Penev from Hello Tax. Uh, a few words about tax, Nick. Thanks, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I love your content as well. Please, if you um, if you get yourself connected to, to, to Nick uh, and you can see the content that he's pr- producing as well. So, um, uh, Nick, over to you. We'd love to hear what's going down. Hey, Rick, you know, uh, the weather is hot. Taxes are hot. You just need to know how to uh, talk about them. So thanks for the quick interaction, guys. No. I hope that you're enjoying the summer. If you're somewhere cold, I mean, you know, I hope you're having a good time. So I'm going to talk about uh, expansion to Europe, you know, because everybody is scared of Europe, you know. And as I say, everybody know Europe is good for pleasure and business. But of course, you need to know how to expand in the e-commerce space. So I'm going to give you some tips that I'm telling everybody, you know, when they ask me about Europe, because a lot of people don't know that actually it's, it's kind of early. So the first and the most most important thing about Europe, only 2% of Amazon sellers in the USA are also selling on Amazon on Amazon Europe and all marketplaces, which means 98% of your competitors are not selling here. So if somebody tells you that it's not early, that's complete BS. I mean, it's just hard and they don't know what to do. So another thing is a lot of people go first to Amazon. So one advice don't listen to amazon they're going to tell you that you need to get multiple vats to sell in europe which is another bs i mean you don't need that uh they have an incentive to push to do like more VATs because it's how they make money but it's not a smart way to do it because i've been selling in europe for 10 years i've been running like 20 brands which we exited so i know from experience you know what is the smart way to do it so uh many of them probably don't know but europe has 450 million clients you know these guys are these are people over 18 which means that these are all potential clients europe has the highest average order value in the world and just remember you just need one vat to start selling in europe and you're gonna say okay nick but where should we start okay then you know this is what i tell everybody you need to get the get one vat in germany to start we're gonna cover it there and somebody's going to ask, okay, but why Germany, you know? Why they're my friends, you know? Why they're, okay, so it's really simple, you know? Germany has a few things that are very attractive in a way for you. Germany is the fourth biggest Amazon marketplace after USA and Japan. Dano just covered that. But like Dano said, Japan is very hard and very different, I mean. Uh, and Germany, it's kind of easier, you know, because you have some tips that a lot of people don't know about. One of them is that, Germany accept documents in English. So if you're coming from an English speaking country, no translations are needed. So another thing, Germany has a special tax authority which deals with US companies. So you gringos, you have a huge advantage here. Other non-US hours, even UK companies would need to wait longer because of that. And a lot of people don't know that. So you have an advantage now. Another thing, you know, Germany is located in the middle of Europe. So it's an ideal dispatch point for your fulfillment from Amazon, FB, or like an uh, free pill that you're using for the rest of Europe and the UK. Also, another thing, Germany doesn't require fiscal representation, so it's cheaper and easier to import your stock there. And of course, no, you're going to say, okay, man, Nick, it sounds very easy, no? I'm starting to like taxes, but of course, is that all? No, of course, I mean, there's other blockers. So... Uh, there is a few things that you need to consider besides the VAT. One of them is product compliance, which sometimes you need to do even before the VAT because based on what your product is, you might need to wait longer to get the product compliance checked. Another thing is logistics. Okay, you need to move your stock to Europe. Customs, you need to import them. Translations, or even like an agent's recommendation. But the thing is, here is you know is what I have in the back. I have like 100,000 plus partners Half of them are actually located in Europe, which are part of my expansion package, and we can actually help out with everything. So when you come to me, you don't need to look anywhere else. I mean, I'm kind of a little bit like a global e-commerce experts. They're partners of ours, and they're actually another option that you guys can do. But the thing is, you don't need to look for anybody. You no, know, we have all your questions answers, and we can actually help you out with that. 
So we have the partner who are going to import your stock, clear it for you. We have people who are going to translate your listings by Walco translators. No, not people that are using like machine learning or anything. These people are actually translation uh, agencies which are specializing in e-commerce and Amazon. They've been doing that for thousands of clients, so they know exactly what they're talking about. And the last, but not the least, you know, when uh, will be your expansion advisors about Europe from start to exit. We're not going to tell them and go and find it yourself. If you have a question, we have an answer, you know, and we have a partner who can help that. And just, just forget one thing, which is very important, you know. Years from now, when you build your big brand in Europe, and when you're in, on your react, cash, after you cash out the eight-figure exit, remember the hack series from the from global e-commerce experts, and you can just send us a selfie from the from the app. And I think I was even quicker than everybody, but that that's the the whole truth. I mean, that's what you need to know. And yes. That's fantastic. So, I mean, I, I think uh, one one of the one of the real positives that we like with working with uh, with Halitax is that, of course, we we can as global e-commerce experts, we can provide so many of those other compliance and logistics services which uh, which go alongside it. So, uh, we're really in the bones of getting yourself set up to be selling in a particular region. So, Nick, thank you so much. I'm not envious in the slightest. Where where exactly are you right now? Uh, actually, I'm on the Black Sea, and let me let me show you guys that I'm not joking. My desk. Is a bodyboard, so that's my summer setup. No, <laughs> I, 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 I just I just came from the beach. My wife told me, "Why don't you join the hack series from the beach?" But it was forty degrees. This is actually a record. Yeah, we I'd have kicked you out. I definitely kicked you out. <laughs> definitely would have been no no chance of getting any hacks on there. Nick, thank you so much. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Well, from one glamorous location to one to another glamorous uh, brand, uh, wanting to add in uh, the fabulous Kitty. Let's move on. Kitty, thank you so much for joining us. I think you've been on nearly all of our hacks so far because you've got such cool stuff to talk about. So thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. No, I, I'm not envious at all of, of where, <laughs> where Ricky is um, Nick is. So, um, but this is one of my favorite um, subjects to talk about. And if Amazon sellers and brand owners are considering eco-friendly packaging, then take note of this. So the demand for sustainable packaging is continuing to skyrocket with consumers year on year. And research shows from, from several sources that over 60% of um, consumers ages 45 and under consider sustainable packaging when they purchase a product. And 50% of consumers are willing to pay more for sustainable packaging and delivery. So if you're a brand owner considering eco-friendly and sustainable packaging, what choices do you have and where do you start? So the first I would say is to have a budget in mind. So changing to an eco-sustainable packaging doesn't mean it will cost you the earth. So, so if it costs you, um, you just need to cost this into your product and then you need to review your project profit margins to make it work for you as well. So not all eco options are expensive. And if, there are, if you use few materials, then it's gonna cost you less. The next thing I would consider is choosing the material or substrates. So over 50% of US consumers rank glass, cardboard and paper as extremely or very sustainable. But there are alternative suggestions. So I'm going to run through a couple for you as well. So first is bamboo packaging. So we've all heard of bamboo packaging. It is cheaper than you actually think and it promotes a healthier planet. It only takes as little as three years for bamboo to fully mature, so there will always be an abundant supply of bamboo. Also, production costs are significantly lower because there's little to no alteration in its composition to create consumer products. The next is cellulose packaging, and this is an alternative to plastic, and it's made from natural sources like wood, cotton and hemp, and it has moisture resistant properties. So it's perfect for food brands if, if that's what you, you know, you're selling. Um, but this is another one of my favorites, actually, um, seaweed based packaging. And this can replace plastic mailers. And it's relatively new to the industry. So it's fairly expensive, but it degrades in compost. It dissolves in water and much the same with green cell foam, which is a bio based foam material made from US grown corn. And this is perfect alternative to styrofoam. We all hate the styrofoams, the packing peanuts for shipping um, fragile items. And you can mold this into shape as well. The next is glassine. And that's a transparent paper packaging, which is smooth and glossy. And this is manufactured from wood pulp. 
um, and, and it's actually making it recyclable and biodegradable. It also has a pH neutral and acid free um, consistency to it as well. And also if you're considering using tissue paper in your products, then make sure it's recycled or acid free. The next um, hack would be making it look good. And this is always our problem is making things look great. Um, but most people tend to think of a brown box when, when it's eco-friendly or sustainable, but it can look extremely boring and characterless, but tends to sort of but trends and things have shifted actually. And there are ways of doing this. So there are huge ranges of FSC certified papers, which aren't brown craft looking at all. And you can still make a difference with the choice of finishing um, using interesting closures, openings and features of the packaging that will help your product stand out from the com competition while doing good for the environment. And the next thing is using environmentally friendly inks and this is the one of the things i've been using for over two decades actually um, I, I work with specific printers and they were one of the pioneers to actually use um, soy and vegetable inks and they are widely recognizable as environmentally friendly choice as well and less harmful to the environment than control than petroleum based inks um, and but the downside with soy ink is that it actually takes longer to dry so you need to sort of consider that in your um, drying time and your printing time as well also water-based inks is another option which is free from harmful chemicals and, and it's safe not only for the environment but for the printer as well um, my last um, hack is actually going the extra mile so sometimes it's the added extra consumers buy into um, that you could offer the, the you know, customers shipping friendly items, perhaps ship items in bulk. Um, you can offer carbon neutral shipping by offsetting of, of missions as well, emissions, sorry. Um, also, you could offer a returns program or a discount to, to your empty products and containers. And a lot of brands do that already. So that's in a nutshell, really, of how you can work with sustainable, eco-friendly packaging, if that's what you're considering. But I hope that has been a good, um, good tips and hacks for you. Kitty, thank you so much. Your content always, is always very timely and uh, well-placed. And actually, it's worth us as the, our, the first tonight announcement that our UK uh, warehouse at Global East Commerce Experts gained ISO 14001 accreditation this week for... Uh, for, for our um, uh, environmental processes. So, uh, and one of the things that we needed to do there was have a real, uh, real deep look at the type of packaging that we were using, where it was, where things were, where things had come from and give options to our clients in terms of uh, the types of pocket packaging and the recyclability or recycledness of, of those things. So, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's increasingly uh, poignant to, uh, to both sellers and of course, to buyers. So thank you so, so much. For your Thank hacks you. i hope everyone enjoyed them well folks next up uh on the line we are going to meet up with mike from uh short so uh shawful thank you mike thank you so much for joining us uh we're going to talk about managing e-commerce cash flow i mean hey you've got no cash we've got no business mike thanks very much no worries thanks ricky yeah exactly um super important um we're going to be covering that and just also slightly covering are introducing you to um, insurance and what, what does Amazon actually require as well at the same time. So some of that compliance side that I know if you've already been here from the start, uh, I think Nick and uh, Nick talked about it from tax side and uh, Danny's talked about it from the kind of J Japanese selling side um, as well. But before we start um, start that, let's just tell you a little bit about us and a sure fall so you know who we are. Um, we are e-commerce insurance experts. Um, so we are the actual underwriters and we are not the brokers uh, all right and, and why is that important and um, where does that come into and that is the first uh part of what now does amazon actually require uh, as a lot of you might know it is now mandatory um and amazon actually requires all third party sellers who cross a threshold of ten thousand us dollars um in sales in any month they have to be compliant and with commercial liability insurance okay i know we only have five minutes so i won't go into everything there but um feel free to email me or message me and find me on linkedin after i can help more um, or go to seller central and it goes into a little bit more detail um as well but look now insurance is mandatory for the amazon seller and other sellers who are using a variety of platforms we want to be able to help best um educating and give our hacks 
um, wear best um, as as well, okay, at the same time. And let me talk to you a little bit about how kind of insurance works and, and how the model is right now. So um, right now, if you're um, needing insurance, you'd have to predict your next 12 months of sales. And uh, probably everyone's now laughing at me going, how do you predict your next 12 months of sales? It is near impossible to um, predict your next 12 months of sales as well. So um, having to predict that is obviously extremely difficult, but that is one challenge um, you have to, to do straight away, okay? You also then, if you say that is, is 10 million, okay? If you over go over that in sales, obviously you're uninsured on, on part of that. And if you're under that, you've, you've overpaid okay um you also have to pay up front and if you don't have that funds in the cash flow uh initially you're going to have to pay specific uh financing uh premiums on top as well and also potential audit fees um already this is huge amounts of, of outgoings um and a stress to any e-commerce business and their cash flow okay um how we're different and how we're able to help in our specific hack um, how to manage your cash flow um, with the insurance. Um, we're actually a monthly bill pay as you sell model, okay? And we directly count, um, connect, sorry, to your seller's account. So uh, how does it help with cash flow? Well, you only pay for what you sell, okay? So for example, if you sold a lot this month because you have prime days um, or you had specific, uh, your seasonal brand or whatever that might be, um, your premiums will fluctuate month by month. OK, so there's no time wasted on financing, no time wasted on auditing um, as well. All right. At the same time. Um, but also, I know some people might already be um, have their insurance. We're more than happy because um, you'll have renewals as well. Um, we see savings of tens to, to hundreds of thousands for um, in some cases of, of people that we've done renewals for as well. So make sure you're kind of uh, here to, to reach out, find me on. Uh, LinkedIn from the QR code that Ricky's put up or drop me an email after um, as well. But hope this has helped um, give you a little bit more insight on what's required on uh, Amazon for insurance and how to manage your cash flow as well. And if you, anyone's got any questions, feel free to uh, reach out. Mike, thanks so much. It's a real, um, it's, it's one of those things in the background that just has to be done to protect your business, isn't it? But it's uh, having something tailored specifically to e-commerce is uh, is really novel. So thank you very much uh, for putting your putting the time in. Really appreciate it. Uh, so we're moving on. Uh, we're moving on now. Hopefully, everyone's everyone can connect with Mike, uh, get their get their their business protected, uh, and uh, and uh, and stay safe when we're selling. Moving on, then we're in. We're whistling along. We're in good shape here. We have the. I mean, this is a spectacular profile picture. But Nata from uh, from Carbon Six joining us now. I'm going to bring Nata in. Uh, see on screen, don't look the same as your profile picture. Not quite the same. Equally as cool, but not quite the same. <laughs> Nata was another person that arrived an hour early for the super keen for the uh, for the webinar. <laughs> so um, Nata, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, we're going to talk about Amazon inventory. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Um, hi, everyone. Um, good to meet you. If I haven't met you already, I'm a former Amazonian, used to work at Amazon, uh, primarily focused on brand management and inventory management side of the house. Um, I'm the co-founder of Data Driven, a company that helps brands grow on Amazon. And we recently sold to Carbon6 earlier this year. And now I'm a kind of in-house resident, um, Amazon expert for Carbon6. So the hack that we're going to go over today is all about maximizing your growth potential on Amazon, and it's all tied to inventory management. Amazon supply chain is built to run as a just-in-time fulfillment model. What this means in theory is that they want to touch the product just in time to get it to the customer at the moment that they desire or buy it. How this plays out in practice is that they want to hold products for a customer no more than about four weeks before the customer buys the product. Just in time is currently manifested on Amazon by in the month fulfillment. So the hack for Amazon sellers is managing their Amazon inventory in line with Amazon's in the month fulfillment model will actually give them a massive increase in access to growth on the Amazon platform. Amazon's largest line item in their PL is inbounding, processing, storing, prepping, packaging and shipping out your products to Amazon customers. And thus when a seller manages their inventory by never being out of stock and also never having more than four weeks of cover of an item, then Amazon rewards this 
in the month fulfillment practice with increased IPI scores, more access to square footage at Amazon fulfillment centers, more fulfillment center access, more close, uh, more access to Amazon fulfillment centers that are closer to um, uh, demand populate uh, high demand uh, population sets, higher likely to convert impressions on advertising, increased organic traffic, expose more exposure in the automation and personalization widgets where it says we recommend for you or customers who bought this also bought that. Um, and better placement just physically and digitally of all your products in the Amazon store and more. The specific hack is that if you manage your inventory to always be within two to four weeks of cover with each ASIN in your active catalog, you'll be putting your chance to succeed on Amazon at the highest possible kind of starting point or foundation as you're, as you're running your business. Kind of extra credit hack is that you should probably be sending in inventory about once a week or every other week in order to maintain this two to four weeks of cover goal. There you go, short and sweet. <laughs> well, Nader, thank you so much. I, I imagine there's uh, there's some nice bits of software which help you to manage your inventory, is there? Absolutely, yes. Carbon6 has a, a, a wonderful suite of different tools that help you do that and other parts that intertwine with that. So Stock is a great tool to help you really deep dive your customizing your management of your inventory, um, data driven as well, um, has some inventory management pieces to help you maximize your growth as well. So definitely optimizing that to get to the that's those sweet spots of uh, of inventory weeks is uh, is the key there. Exactly. Yeah. You. you um, the the trick with weeks of cover is you need to know how much you're going to actually sell in the future, and so you need to use some predictive modeling around seasonality and historic performance and maybe category rank shifting. Um, and so that can be a bit daunting to do all that manually by yourself for every single one of your ASINs at all times. And so using strong software that can do that for you and kind of be that watchful eye for you is definitely a high recommendation. Fantastic. Well, the, that, the, the details of that will be in the white paper. And of course, if you connect with NATO, you'll be able to, uh, you'll be able to see where all that's coming from and, uh, and connect to the team to be able to help out if you need to. Nato, thank you so much for joining us, especially on the long burn. Absolutely. That was uh, uh, on the long haul. You, uh, did, you, did, you, did, you did the right job there. Thank you so much. Well, we're going to start, we're going to, we're going to move away from software. We're going to start talking about something which is uh, particularly topical for a lot of sellers who've had products in the market. We have produced a lot of content on GS1 barcodes, and um, it, it's something that really, well, you start off thinking, well, a barcode is a barcode. And then when you hear from Megan, you realize that actually it's not as it is. So, Megan, thanks so much for joining us. Talk us about upgrading barcodes. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ricky. Uh, you know, we here at GS1 US are so excited to be back. And thank you to you and everyone at Global E-Commerce Experts for inviting us to the third Ultimate Hack Series. It's been a great event and amazing speakers to be up here with. So my hack is going to be a little aspirational for everybody. So it's something you can really look forward to coming up in the next couple of years. Now, if you're really looking to grow and go global, eventually you're likely going to need a global trade item number or GTIN to identify your product. Now, this is a unique identifier that you can license from GS1 that acts like a global license plate for your product and allows you to sell on marketplaces and in retailers all over the world. You encounter GTINs every day, and they're the number at the bottom of barcodes that you scan at checkout. And that UPC or EAN barcode has actually been powering the supply chain unchanged for 50 years. But like every piece of technology, even the mighty barcode must adapt and big change is coming for it. A major global shift is in the works to enable two-dimensional barcodes, which are usually called QR codes, to work both at checkout and to improve consumer engagement with the scan of a smartphone. The goal is a gradual shift from the UPC towards this checkout ready QR code across the United States. Now, the 2D barcode is going to be powered by a GS1 standard called Digital Link that provides the structure that can seamlessly marry the B2B information that's required at checkout with the customer facing URL. This barcode will open up a whole new channel for marketing and storytelling. For marketplace sellers, it provides a new way to connect with customers after a purchase when the product is in their home. You'll be able to provide instructional videos, recommend complimentary products, offer information on maybe your certifications or designations that might help you speak to your customer. Really, you know, the possibilities are endless. 
And us here at GS1 US, we're really excited to see all the amazing ways that companies like everybody in the audience here are going to use to uh, are going to use for this brand new marketing stream to retain and re-engage your customers. Now, some folks in the audience might already be using QR codes to engage your audience, which is awesome, and you're ahead of the game. But GS1 Digital Link is going to give that future QR code powers it just doesn't have today. For example, the 2D barcode is going to free up real estate on your packaging because it's compact and really efficient. And that's going to be particularly relevant for cosmetic and skincare brands, along with products that carry a small tag, so like apparel. This 2D barcode will enable whole new functionalities as well, like serialization, for example, which is really going to maximize your supply chain traceability and a host of other benefits that are going to be associated with that traceability. And it's going to help retail partners better manage your product, particularly if it's perishable or seasonal. In summary, this barcode is going to be able to work a lot harder for your brand than any barcode has before. Uh, we recommend you check out GS1 US on our socials for updates on that migration to the 2D barcode. Well, wow, zipping in right at the end there, and you, you nearly caught me off guard. That was, a, that was you did a, you're like a hard finish. That's so good. So, uh, I, I've learned from from GS1 US. I've learned so much about the depth of barcodes, and you know the amount, how much how much data is behind them, and how powerful it is when it comes to uh, to using GS1 barcodes. We, you know, as a three PL here in the here, and we're we're onboarding clients with. Uh, all of the data surrounding their products. And we need to know weights and dimensions and we need to know, you know, ASIN numbers, we need to know a whole pile of information. And those that uh, that have their GS1 barcodes dialed in, it's just so much quicker and faster, so much quicker and faster. So thank you very much for filling us in. Uh, urge you all to connect with, uh, with Megan there to learn more about how you can make your barcodes not just be a product of being able to scan uh, things in and out and be able to sell, but how you can make, make your barcodes um, help you expand your business. So uh, please do connect. And Megan, thank you so much for joining us uh, and putting thank some you. content into the event. Thank you so much. Well, next up, what we got? We are with the one and only e-commerce Chris, Chris McCabe in the green room. I could see, you can see him when you're watching him in the green room. His cat was walking around on the screen, uh, but the cat has now uh, moved, uh, moved off. So Move Chris, on. it's just you on your own. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining us. Um, and sure. we are talking about hacking the hacks. This sounds pretty cool. Yeah. <clears throat> and thanks for having us, by the way. I appreciate the opportunity to talk about the somewhat scary side of Amazon. Um, Very welcome. I'll, I'll move it through. Uh, hacking the hacks, basically what we mean by that is um, keenly discerning which tricks and tips are useful because they're compliant and which ones have no value, have no use because they're just going to get you into trouble or get you a policy warning, get your ASIN suspended, or God forbid, get your account suspended. Um, so the first thing we recommend, of course, is familiarizing yourself <clears throat> with the policies around any marketing or listing optimization hack that you might have. Um, it's important to be able to vet a service that you might bring in, an agency or a consultant, to make sure that they understand the policies. If they don't, um, then obviously it's necessary for you to understand what the policies are. Um, Understand terms of service. Understand not just by looking at seller forum posts or LinkedIn posts. Don't judge compliance on that. Make sure if you have a service provider, you give them kind of a quiz or run them through some questions to make sure that they have a compliance arm, right? The kind of just basic how to vet a service uh, advice. But um, we see a lot of people around Prime Day and in Q4 or if they're facing stiff competition, especially in .com in the US, um, sometimes sellers are overreaching without uh, layering in uh, the factor of policy compliance and can, could they get into trouble for employing a hack? And I'll give a couple examples before I go. Um, certainly think about whether or not you know how to interpret the policy correctly. If you need policy experts, people like us to come in and tell you how to interpret it, naturally we interpret policies all day long. That's what we do. We understand how policy enforcement works at Amazon. But if you have any doubt about whether or not your interpretation of Amazon's policies coincides with their interpretation, which of course their interpretation is the one that matters most. Um, ask yourself, is this something, is the trick or the tip that I'm employing either coming up with on your own or uh, the idea of a service that you're using, is it something that's going to be good for Amazon's customers, right? Amazon wants to protect buyer experience at all costs. Is it something that will confuse buyers? Is it something that will misrepresent the product, right? We see listing titles, images, bullets on detail pages, sometimes 
um, putting in content that's advantageous to one seller to you, but not to the buyer. It'll mislead or confuse them. And of course, why does Amazon care about that? Well, it's bad for Amazon if buyers are complaining about it. So also think not just is it better for consumers and buyers on Amazon, but is it something Amazon's going to be okay with? Are they going to get a lot of complaints? Are they going to have to keep reviewing your account and your listings over and over to determine if they need to send you some warnings? Are they going to receive complaints that are piling up from other sellers, but also from buyers who bought from you in the past and want to return the item? All the touch points, right? All the pain that could come from a bad order, bad comments, bad complaints. That all blows back on you, right? It hurts your account health. It could get you into trouble way beyond just one minor league warning for policy violations. They could hold it against you. You know, that can hurt your account health down the road. They could review your whole account if they see that this is a pattern of behavior or if they think that you're just employing all these third-party services without really understanding that they understand what the policies are. I can't tell you how many times we've worked with brands or sellers who um, – Actually, the client actually knew more about the policy than the service they had employed, which is a little bit scary, but it's just something to keep in mind um, when you're going through this. So uh, especially during peak sales, I mean, if you make a bad mistake right before Prime Day, obviously you're costing yourself more money than you otherwise would. So is it going to get on Amazon's nerves? Will they have more administrative headaches because you're creating, you're making waves basically. Problems for buyers mean problems for Amazon. Um, and consider, of course, whether or not you're in this for the short term or the long term. I mean, most of our clients are really in this for the long haul. So they're worried about their account health all the time. If you're looking for a short term, you know, kind of quick score during a holiday peak. I mean, OK, there are sellers out there doing that. And Amazon understands that. But is that really, you know, what your interests are long term? What if you change your mind and you're in it for the long haul? Or you want to create another brand or new listings for a different type of product in the future? Have you undermined Amazon's faith in your ability to run a business on Amazon or your ability to understand the policies? Or are you calling seller support or account health reps and constantly asking them, well, what's the policy? Educate me, teach me. And then they say, well, have you been through seller university? Or what's your interpretation of the policy? And you're not even sure what your interpretation of the policy is, right? That undermines their faith that you know what you're doing. The less that you demonstrate that you know what you're doing, the more afraid they are to have you as a seller on the platform. So I'll just run through a few examples. Um, product reviews. We're still getting people showing us product inserts that violate Amazon's policies. Uh, they're working with a marketing company or a promotional company who tells them, yeah, this is okay. As long as you're not asking for a positive review, it's okay. That's actually not true. If you have five stars across the top of an insert, or if you're giving products away, even if you're not asking for a positive review, if you net a cluster, if they detect uh, data, a, a cluster set of positive reviews, a spike in reviews, basically, um, then they're going to look at what kind of uh, inserts you're using, what kind of promotions you're doing, and if they violate policies or not. Also, inserts that violate policies are easy to detect by competitors. You can just buy from you and send a screenshot of a non-compliant insert to Amazon. So product reviews is one example. ASIN variations. We see a lot of agencies and consultants who don't understand the variations policies themselves. Most sellers who come to us and say, can you check out our variations and see if they're compliant? Assure us that they're 90% sure that the ASINs are in proper variations. And we see that they're mixing and matching between color themes, size, uh, different variation themes that aren't compliant. Um, it's again, easy for a competitor to report you for that. You could easily see listings suspended uh, due to that kind of a mistake. And then finally, this is my favorite. I saw it posted on LinkedIn. Somebody said that you could, a, you could add um, favorable keywords to the main image on a product detail page in order to uh, increase and improve your sales rank. Um, this is my favorite because we actually saw somebody from Amazon who said, I enforce these policies all the time. Don't listen to this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's going to get your listing suspended. So they didn't even understand that you couldn't add wording to the main image. Because, of course, anyone is supposed to be able to join that detail page if they've got the right product and if they've got uh, compliant language to add and compliant information about that product to the manufacturer. Um, image violations are something that are common. I'm not saying it gets everyone in instantly suspended, but it's just something to consider that it was actually a consultant in an agency that was pushing that hack on LinkedIn and lots of people commented on it whether it was good, whether it was bad. And then an Amazon employee jumped on and said, by the way, don't listen to this at all. We see this all the time. This will just get you suspended. So Busted. 
question, well, I mean, just question the source and do some fact checking. Don't just blindly trust somebody that says on their website, we're TOS compliant. You have to drill down into that. You have to ask some questions. You have to know what questions to ask, of course. But Amazon expects you, the buck stops with you. You're the seller of record. They expect you to vet the service appropriately because people come to us a lot when their account's suspended. We look at the appeal they've written and it mostly blames the service provider and they haven't really blamed themselves for hiring the service provider. So mm -hmm. um, I, get, I get that that's kind of a basic hack in some sense, but that's really important to, to just flip it around and think of it from their perspective. Chris, thank you so much. I think there's uh, there's so much uh, hesitancy over maybe um, you know, going against TOS, may, am I in TOS? What will happen? Yeah, uh, and, and some of that kind of anxiety that goes with that. So it's a really good way to unwrap that. Thank you very, very much, and thanks for joining no, the series. Uh, and and uh, definitely connect with Chris using the QR code on the screen there. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you. Moving on, we're we're excited to have Joseph from BidX. I'm going to uh, just move things on from there. Joseph, thanks so very much for joining us. We're moving on from terms of service, and we're now talking about day parting and advertising can campaigns. Dude, what the hell is day parting? All right. Well, first of all, thanks for having me. Uh, pleasure to be here. Um, I'm Joe Phillips. I'm an account manager with BidX, and um, I'm going to be talking about day parting here. Um, so essentially, day parting is a subset of PPC. And so PPC overall, I'm going to start off broad and get real narrow. PPC is important because, you know, starting off, you could just take Amazon suggested bids at face value and, you know, it'll be effective. But there's a difference between effectiveness and efficiency. Um, so as you get more into it, there's a whole back market economy based off of um, optimizing your bids, optimizing your keywords and making sure that you're getting your bids at the closest market price to what people are um, searching for. And getting more granular with that based on, a, on all of PPC, there's something called day parting. And an easy way to think about day parting is just thinking of the whole week in just a grid and breaking it down into like six hour increments. So you have four increments for each day. And then during those different times in, of the day, you'll have different amounts of um, conversions. And you can see at what time and then on what day people are buying your product. And that data there will tell you, all right, well, if I have people bidding at you know, 12 to 6 on weekdays, that's, that's really when I should be investing um, the most amount I should be allocating most of my budget to that time. Um, so kind of stepping in from there, um, overall, like utilization of day parting, um, has just a ton of really great benefits. Um, as I touched on before, um, scheduling ads can appear during different periods of the day. Um, you can see when the audience is most active and that overall just makes your ads more relevant, cost efficient and enhances your performance insights. Um, so kind of touching on that ad relevance part, you can strategically display your ads during the periods when your audience is most likely to engage um, and capture the audience really at the optimal time. When, and when you do this, the chances of connecting with your potential customers when they're most receptive to the message is gonna lead to greater amounts of engagement and overall just better um, utilization of your ad spends. Um, so if you want to get the most out of your RO, if you want to get the most ROI, the most bang for your buck for what you're inputting, going down by this, um, amounts of, of when people are buying is the best way to do this. Um, so for instance, um, my backgrounds in selling is in construction equipment. So if you're selling, it, it's all about knowing your audience too. So for construction equipment, most of the time when people would be buying, if I were to be looking at my day parting schedule, I would be thinking, okay, the people that are buying are working during 12 to six and they're not, it's not their money. They're spending somebody else's budget and they're work and they're spending during daytime hours. So I would want to increase my bids and my budgets during those times by 50% to make sure that I'm the most relevant ad and to greater increase the probability 
of them buying my my product. Um, and then during the times like the weekends when no one's buying, maybe they're just browsing, you can decrease your bids so that you don't show up at the top for when people are not buying. So overall, day parting has a lot of really great advantages. Um, it's just a, a more granular part of PPC and just a way for you to be able to get a lot more bang for your buck and make sure that when you are spending, you're spending in the right place and getting your products in front of the right people. Thanks. Joseph, thank you. Some really deep dive there into uh, into into make maximizing your PPC spend. And that's that will work, of course, across all different marketplaces uh, and capacity. So thank you so much. Uh, make sure you check out uh, the BidX offering and connect with Joseph as well to understand more about day parting. And there's lots more, of course, in the white paper coming uh, by email afterwards that will kind of explain the uh, some of these more technical pieces. Joseph, thanks very much for joining us. Moving on, we, uh, we're going from day parting into engagement and conversions. So I'd like to welcome Raphael from Share It Studio to the feed. Raphael, thanks for joining us. Thanks for bearing around, uh, around it. I hope you didn't get too drunk in the green room there, wasting with the rest of the guys. There's some, there's some real menacing people back there. I was some, si sipping some water here. Just some water, no problem. Just so we're, look, we're, we're super keen to find out about um, increasing engagement and conversions. So uh, your, your moment is shining. All right, guys, five minutes on the clock. Uh, that was a very good hack, Joseph, by the way. Very, very nice. I really like the congratulations, but my name is Rafael. I'm the founder of Share Studio, guys. What we do at Share Studios is we create content for the Amazon platform, strictly for the Amazon platform, because we understand the user's um, behavior, and that's how we create the content. What type of content? Photos, videos, anything that has to do with the visual aspects, because the content is the listing. We've won awards in the past, um, very good awards, actually. This is, we won three of these. So yeah, so um, that's a little bit about me. So we're going to talk about today about brand story. So I know we didn't have any slides. Oops, sorry. Let me just do something really here. Stage. There you go. Okay, video effects. Sorry, guys. Portrait. Okay, so we're going to talk about Brand story. So as you know, brand story is a part of the A plus content. Part of the A plus content, why? Because there is brand story and then you have what we knew before as enhanced product description, which is the bottom, right? So all this is brand story. Why is this important? Well, first of all, if you don't have this, you cannot unlock the premium A plus content, even though if you have 15 variations and you do the little hack that we have on YouTube, you can go watch our YouTube channel. So you need to have this. But the most important thing is because Amazon wants you not to sell products anymore. Amazon wants you to sell a brand. What does that mean? You create a, a, a brand, you create several products in Amazon, buyers go and get your brand, you build that brand loyalty, and then buyers come back into Amazon. You have to create a better shopping experience for these buyers. So you create brand awareness and you are able to tell the story of your brand in a much better way, a much deeper way, and people can relate to you. So let's think of about a quick example, Lily and Naturals, right? Lily and Naturals is a brand that was born on Amazon in 2017. Now they're on almost all major retail stores. So that's the importance of Amazon that Amazon has is that brands are getting from so popular that other people want to sell those brands. That's the power that Amazon has. Another cool thing is that here, you see these modules right here, you can actually put um, other products there. So you're doing cross marketing for your brand. All right. And also you can uh, incentivize people to visit your store. So um, remember, not just sell, right? Develop a brand. That's what Amazon's doing. That's why they're including Amazon Post. That's why you have the follow button now. They, they're working towards that, right? Um, as well as, as Amazon Inspire. So um, how do we make an effective brand story? Well, we need to know the user and how the user is looking at the brand story. So as you know, um, people buy through Amazon, 53% actually through mobiles, right? The blue line, top line right here. This is mobile and this is um, desktop. So it's very important to understand the user. So in, if you are looking at Amazon and Amazon listing through desktop, it's easier um, to spot the Amazon brand story. But if you're looking through mobile, you actually just see this little piece and a little piece of the actual um, other modules. So the other modules, which are these, you won't be able to see them. So you need to tell the people, it's like basically walking, uh, crossing a, a kid across the road. Right? So you have to grab them by the hand and tell them, hey, 
we should look at this. So how can we do this? We do this through a CTA, which is a call to action. So what do we do at Share Studio when we create brand stories? We think of it. You know, uh, I love the way Joseph was um, talking about having data and, and, and understanding the data and then making adjustments to the data. We do the exact same, th same thing here at Share Studio. We don't create just content out of, oh, this is beautiful. No, there has to be a meaning behind it. So this is what we came up with. Um, we came up with a, a clear CTA, which is basically a, hey, swipe right, right? So how do you know if what you're creating is effective? Because remember, you want to give readers a clear direction um, and help them take the next step into that journey into your brand, right? Because this is going to create brand awareness, which in the long term is going to create more long term sales. For example, I've been buying one of the same brands since film school. I went to film school since 2012, right, which is newer. That has created that um, affection for me. I'm pretty sure that a lot of buyers are the same and hopefully with your brand as well. So once you have that idea, how can you know if it's going to be effective or not? Well, very quick, just run a poll, right? We use paid food for this. So we asked a pretty straightforward question. Which brand story for this bamboo cutting board would you be more likely to scroll through on your mobile devices? We asked 50 US based respondents, women, they're married, and Amazon Kitchenware shoppers. And we got double the score for the call to action. Super straightforward and simple, right? So we have this and we have the brand story. All right, what is a effect? How can you make an effective brand story, right? Uh, sorry, um, call to action. So there are a few simple things. Um, don't be salesy. Nobody likes, like, if somebody here sells Herbalife, it's, it's okay. Like, I support you. I have friends to do it. But nobody's like, hey, do you want to, like, be like a salesy pitch? People don't like that anymore. So don't tell them what to do. Just like, hey, just like explore more. Give them more of that benefit. It's like, hey, I'm here to help you. Explore more of this, all right? So don't be salesy. Another thing, after the digital era, everything, people's attention span is so, so shrink, um, small. So you don't want to keep a lot of text. Just be straight to the point. Just like, hey, buy now, all right? Instead of find out more, sorry. Find out more instead of uh, all the other text and as well have visual hierarchy why is this important this is important because you want to guide people you want to guide the vision so instead of having a quick swipe right have a swipe right that's like calls out that's more like ambition like people are easier to digest i hope you like this hack we're sharing studio and yeah until next time guys bye Raphael, thank you for that whistle stop pull. That uh, that brand story looks very cool. And actually, uh, after you finish broadcasting here, there's a few questions in the uh, in the in the in the viewer comments which you could do with uh, answering. So, uh, I hope everyone's I hope everyone's grabbed your uh, your QR code and connected with you on LinkedIn as well, so they can get your uh, get your insights furthermore. Raphael, thank you so much. Uh, lots of great insight there. Um, appreciate your input. So that's pretty cool. We're whistling through. We're all in good, we're in good fret. This is uh, um, uh, next up. I'm very excited because this is somebody who uh, I've done. I've made some contact with before. It's always great fun. And when I was talking about getting people getting um, uh, getting up to mischief in the green room, waiting to come in, uh, this was the person I was talking about. So hi, thank you for joining us. Let's move you into the into the screen here. Uh, CEO of Eva Commerce. You're going to talk through strike through pricing. Now this is something which. Our clients in account management talk to us a lot about how they can uh, how they can manage this and how they can take it to their advantage. So thanks very much for joining us. Thanks for the content. Uh, here's your moment. Thank you, Ricky, for having me. And by the way, I like the Raphael's like uh, you know papers, and that was a great idea. Pseudo slides. <laughs> I should hire him as well. You know, like for the same thing. Well, I mean, I'm a computer engineer, and I mean, for the last 20 years, I'm dealing with AI. Somehow, I'm so happy this year because AI is so popular. So now, I, I mean, it's not just a buzzword. Everybody's using it. And what, like one of the key things in the Amazon world that I'm dealing for the last 15 years now um, is like how to use the data in the best way and how to create like more traffic, more conversions. And I mean, I just started from high level. There are this couple of concepts uh, in on Amazon, like availability, traffic, conversion, and profit, where the conversion very much depends on price. So 
Um, why price? Because there are a couple of things like, obviously, you can optimize your image, you can do great things, but you can do it for once or maybe you repeat it like every month or every quarter. But at the end of the day, once you're able to bring traffic in, the price is something you can change even every day, every minute, <laughs> every hour. So there is like this um, concept like we uh, also talked about the... Uh, uh, the day part day parting right with advertising and the similar concept very much applies to pricing so what is the best price and what is the best way to represent it now uh we talked about dynamic pricing i mean eva that i am the ceo and co-founder of is a integrated platform of advertising pricing and inventory management and for many years i talked about dynamic pricing and i discovered that that's not the right concept to, to talk about when it comes to price. It's about not about the dynamic pricing. It's about a dynamic promotion. Because when your price is $10, the less price on Amazon, um, and if you just reduce it, yes, that play that helps with the conversion or may not, may or may not, you know, because some of the products are price sensitive and some others are not. But instead of like, changing the price you can keep the price at the same level which is ten dollars and you can use different uh, strategies different promotion strategies to reduce your price in a way that it will increase the conversion now let's talk about a few things that everybody knows and then i can jump into that strike through price so one of the things you can use a coupon code uh, you can put a 10% coupon code, like, you know, there's a, if somebody clicks to that, yes, that will they will get the 10% degrees. Now, two things that a lot of Amazon sellers don't know about the coupon codes. Number one, you pay Amazon if you use them, okay? A lot of sellers, very interesting, they don't know. And number two, um, you know, a lot of consumers, they don't even click to the coupon code most of the time. It's just another click, right? And guess what? A lot of people don't do it. Now, we discovered that a, not, a better way of a promotion is the strike-through price. Because what you can do is your price is $10 and you can say, hey, uh, my price now is $8. And which means that Amazon will change that list price, make it strike uh, and uh, add it at the, uh, the reduction on the price. Let's say it's 20% reduced and the final price, it's $8. That setup of strike through price can increase your conversion by 20 to 40%. Now, a couple of interesting facts about the strike through price, like, and you can tell me, hey, that this is great. I mean, anybody can do it, right? Now, there is a problem. Uh, because if on Amazon you add your list price, and if you do a strike through, and you think that you can always keep it at $8 and the strike through price, it will not work. Because at some point, Amazon will think that you are cheating the system. It's actually your price is not 10, it's eight, right? So what happens eventually is like your price that eight becomes, you know, the price. So there is no strike through. Now, how can we uh, play around this? You know, that's kind of like the tech that um, we developed and uh, it can be done manually. So I'm going to tell you the manual way. What you can do is uh, you can schedule, you can assume that like you don't do it all the time. And you pick the right time and day uh, of the week to, you know, to, to basically do that strike through pricing, right? So by doing this, because you're not doing it all the time, you're just picking the right time and doing it manually, obviously. So, for example, you can say, I'm going to do this strike through price uh, between um, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday. And obviously, if you do it in that way, that's very easy and Amazon will accept it and you can try to do it, right? So, you know, you know, the problem with that is like you have, you know, maybe tens or hundreds of SKUs and variations and a lot of 
um, you know, kind of, you know, kind of dependencies. So not that easy. So this can be done with a tech, like for example, Eva or any other tech where you can schedule a strike through price for a, a specific time, a specific date, and it can run every week in the same way. Now, a lot of your uh, competitors even will not realize it because you are doing it only for a, a certain time frame. And then Amazon will also likely to accept it if you're not exaggerating the 90% of the time, but you're picking the right times to do the strike price. You can always have that strike through price. Now, I'm going to also give you another nice, um, you know, uh, hint around what is the best time. So let's think about the best time. For example, the advertising companies talk about the day, you know, the part thing, like when is the best time to increase or decrease the ACOS. Obviously, now we have the Amazon marketing stream, uh, which means that real time you have the visibility of ACOS. So that's great. Now, at the same time, you have the conversion rate. So you need to look at two things at the same time. When is the best traffic and when is the best conversion? Because if you are able to bring these two things together and decide like, okay, what is the right time for me to do that strike through price? You're going to get the best return, not only in terms of conversion, but also in terms of like um, reduced ACOS, because as your conversion increases, that will directly impact your ACOS, right? Isn't it? And why it's important, not because you want to save money. I mean, I wouldn't try to save money on that 5% ACOS. What I will do is I will even put more money into advertising because you can increase your ranking. Now, why I'm like jumping from one thing to another, but try to keep it simple, because all these things, profit, uh, traffic, conversion, availability, they're all integrated. They are all dependent to each other. And that's also something very important as well. Last thing, for example, if you are in the beauty space, we, uh, we, we, are, we have data from almost uh, 3,000 brands on beauty. Based on that data, Thursdays, 8 a, uh, 8, uh, 5 p.m. to 8 a.m., 8 p.m., Thursday, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. is the best time people go on Amazon to buy, to buy beauty products because weekend is coming. Kind of an easy thing. You don't need to sometimes look at the data. You can always ask me for any other category and the best conversion rates for your products. But that's the time. Use the strike through price and get a much better conversion rate uh, and, uh, you know, kind of like increase your rankings faster. Hi, so the best tip, the best hack of the entire series so far has been that I know to freeze my credit card on a Thursday evening when my, when my wife is sitting with the iPad. That's making the online other purchases. thing. Just, so this absolutely. is pretty cool. That's the best hack. This could save me a fortune. This is amazing. Thank absolutely. you so much. These are some real, this is, this is like, it's like a massive dinner party of industry experts. So um, I really hope that you're enjoying the content and, uh, um, and uh, thank you so much, Hi, for joining us. Uh, on this time and, and we'll no doubt we'll create some content again in the future so thank you so much let's take a look so next up we have john from first north marketing first north. My, my, my fourth first north uh this is pretty cool because we haven't actually we've got we've got one hour and 20 minutes into hack series three and i haven't used the two letters a or <laughs> I yet so here we are all right we're on uh, we're on like hack 12 and we're in here, so we're getting deep down and dirty with some AI. Tell us about AI and uh, and it's and, and how we can make it work for us on Amazon. Yeah, uh, excited to do it. So first, I'm going to start with um, a little bit of background. First North Marketing, um, we're focused on Amazon, and what we really do is focus on taking brands on Amazon everywhere from launch up to seven figures um, in the U.S. and the Canadian marketplace. And as a part of that, you know, we're doing Amazon ads, we do listing conversion optimization, and then catalog management. And today, what I'm going to talk about is finding your competitor's kryptonite using AI within, this is a part of our Conversion Hero program. Um, and I want to start with why this is so important. Um, you know, we keep hearing that conversion rates are important, but just to give you some numbers as far as the impact. So, 
um, with our Conversion Hero program, what we did was we helped a client boost their conversion rate on one product from 49.7 to 56.2%. And that, you know, those few percentage points don't sound like that much. But what it did in dollars was give them an additional $1,000 a week in sales. So that's an additional $52,000 without having to spend an additional penny on PPC over the course of the year. So we're looking at how do we grow profitably? Obviously, that conversion rate is a part of that. And I would say what's even missed by a lot of sellers is what I call the compound interest of Amazon, because not only are they going to get an additional $52,000 in sales, you know, kind of from that math, but also thinking about how the Amazon flywheel works, where they're going to get additional visibility, they're going to get additional sales velocity, which means more reviews, which means even more uh, visibility. So, you know, easily could look at an additional um, $60,000, $75,000 in sales from boosting that conversion rate, which all sounds great. But of course, getting into the hack, the nuts and bolts of how do we make that happen um, and find that competitor's kryptonite using AI um, to know how we boost that conversion rate. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to identify those top three to five competitors. So you can use a tool like Helium 10. You can kind of find products that are similar to yours. They're serving the same niche as you and in a similar price point. Then what we want to do is we want to find that customer's pain point. And the way that we do this um, using the, probably the fastest way is using Helium 10, but you can do it manually as well, is they have a review insight tool. And what we want to do is we want to look at those top reviews because those are the reviews where customers said, hey, this info is really uh, helpful in deciding to buy this product. And then what we want to do is we want to look at those negative reviews. So three star, two star, one star reviews on those competitor products. And then what we can do if we're using something like a tool like Helium 10 is export that data into a spreadsheet. And then we can um, take that top 10 to 20 that have already been upvoted that customers have said have really important negative reviews. And then we can use chat GPT to do really what it does best from the AI standpoint. One of the things that AI really um, is great at right now, and that is taking a lot of data and summarizing those negative reviews to find weaknesses in your competitors. So you can take an example. We use a script um, where we just say, uh, please analyze, insert your product, uh, or the, excuse me, the competitor's product reviews, list the top three pain points that your customers are experiencing with this product. And what we get out of that generally is three to five um, kind of summaries of the trends and pain points. And we can take one or two of those pain points um, in the example. For example, uh, we were working with super greens and one of the pain points was people said, hey, um, there's a lot of filler in this competitor where they're not getting all the nutritional benefits that they were hoping for because the formula changed, those types of things. So what we could do was identify where there was a weakness in the competitor's product. We were working with a client that they had a product that didn't have any of those fillers. So then what we could do is once we um, pinpointed that lead benefit where we found what customers were care, uh, cared about, then we could think about how do we test that lead benefit. So if we look at the next step, so step five, um, what we can do is create a new title because titles are a lot easier to test than something like images where, you know, it can take 15 to 20 minutes to come up with a title where you're calling out that lead benefit. And then what we like to do is make sure that, that that's in the first 80 characters. So that way it gets seen on mobile um, and test out that lead benefit. Um, and that's our next step is we're looking at um, manage my experiments and testing that new title to see if uh, it boosts our conversion rate and to find a lead benefit where we're going to get that boosting conversion rate. And then the most important piece is once we have found using something like the title where um, we have found a title that boosts our conversion rate, we want to make sure that we double down on the rest of our listing with that new lead benefit. So that means not only do we now have it in the title and we've shown that the customer really cares about that benefit and they're um, more of them are willing to click through and to buy based on that lead benefit of solving their problem, but we want to make sure that we emphasize that across the listing. So that means putting that in your secondary images, um, into your A plus content that was talked about earlier, your brand story, um, putting that into the videos, in your bullets. Um, so that way you're really bringing that message across to the customer that you're really speaking their language in order to double down and boost your conversion rate even more. So that way you can profitably grow on Amazon in 2023. If you want kind of the specifics on the scripts uh, or the prompts that we use, um, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I'm happy to provide those there along with other resources as a part of our Conversion Hero um, system because I think this is one of the biggest 
um, kind of missed opportunities in 2023 is the nuts and bolts of how you increase conversion rate for profitable growth on Amazon. John, thanks so much. I cheated a bit there because whilst you were talking and I, I turned off my camera, I yeah. actually started looking at the white paper. So I'm, I'm ahead. I'm ahead of everyone who's watching here because you haven't, no one's received the white paper yet. Uh, but those, you know, as we are you know, beginning to, uh, you know, since what it was it, November, December, 2022 was we're beginning to kind of uh, start to feel comfy with ChatGPT in our, in our, in our businesses and in our lives um you know understanding the scope of what we can do with it in a positive way is um i mean uh, there's there's loads of things that can be negative but this is one that's super positive so john thank you so much um so much for joining us thanks so much for giving us that in, that, that info really meaningful benefit there to uh to growing your business thank you so yeah much. thanks so much for having me uh, i'll leave john's um linkedin uh qr code there on the screen there to watch just, just pull things together because next up Actually, this is another, we're going straight into another very cool one because we're going into virtual bundles. Someone's actually talked about virtual bundles already. So as if by magic, I'm going to bring in Ben from Seller Candy. I don't know, where, Ben, I don't know whether you were in the green room when we were talking about virtual um, bundles, but we weren't going into the detail that you will. So this is very cool. Thank you so okay, much for joining Okay, sounds us. good. Yeah, no, I miss that. Well, I can't, you know, I feel like now that AI is out of the way, maybe I should just go back to the old shiny object engine and just talk about <laughs> yeah. cryptocurrency or something else. Yeah, exactly. so. yeah. spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm just messing around. But thanks so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. I have actually uh, was not in the green room because I was watching this for the last 45 or so minutes. You know, I started as an Amazon seller and I still sell a little bit with now KDP and some other stuff. So I get a lot of value just from being here and watching this. But today I lead the partnerships team here at Seller Candy. I mostly spend my weeks actually talking to either Amazon sellers, agencies, or um, some of our partner companies about kind of being a therapist to them, right? Learning about all of the just different and unique problems they're dealing with um, and just seeing how, that, how we can actually help. So our team actually works with agencies, sellers, aggregators, all different types of people, but to really alleviate a lot of the different challenges that they have on Amazon. So we, we always say that we kind of are there to take away all of the headache inducing problems so that you don't have to deal with those. Uh, but today, since... Um, I, you know, I want to take a break from being the therapist. I wanted to take a little pivot and kind of talk about one of the other big things that's discussed um, or clients submit tickets and ask us to work on, which is um, listings. Now, we help with all things across the gambit. We do a lot with flat files and delete relists and all that kind of stuff. But I want to kind of be lighthearted and keep it more fun. So um, what I'm going to talk about today is one of my favorite low lift hacks, and that's going to be virtual bundles. So um, if you're not familiar with virtual bundles, this is something that you can run and start setting up and probably get up and running in your business today if you already have live products. But if you're not aware what they are, essentially, if you're shipping products into Amazon, let's say you have A, B, and C products that you're shipping into an FBA center, um, individually, Amazon will also allow you to create a virtual bundle, which pretty much means that the, you go and set the virtual bundle up. You tell Amazon which products to, to go in that. It has to be a minimum of two and up to five. Um, and then Amazon, when an order comes in, so it'll create a unique listing. And when an order comes in, Amazon's actually going to go pick pack those uh, two, three, four products and put them in one box and ship them out to your customer. So the customer just gets the products all together as if they got a true bundle. Um, this is obviously something that, so you have to have at least two products in your catalog. Um, this is, you know, more or less going to be kind of geared towards the private label sellers out there. Um, they also have to be under the same brand. And there are some categories that don't allow this. So there are a couple caveats, but the reason that I love this is number one, if you go and look on Amazon or if you've been shopping, uh, you know, over the last few weeks or during prime day is currently Amazon is displaying a massive, 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 massive banner. Uh, with all of the bundles that contain your product right under kind of the main product areas area. So obviously our goal is always, you know, John said it right there with that conversion rates. We want to look at how ways that we can increase conversions. And there's so many of these different little levers that we can pull and we want to stop the scroll, right? That's what a plus contents for. That's what, you know, running ads back onto our own listings. There's so many different mechanisms for this, but ultimately we want the customer to convert. And one of the awesome things is right now on the product detail page, Amazon displays right under your main image title bullets of your individual product, any bundles that that product is in, Amazon's going to display them in a carousel, uh, which is really cool because it's going to help stop that scroll. People might click through to your bundle product, or they might see the price on your bundle and then actually convert on your individual product. So it helps with uh, average order value, conversions, and just keeping people within your brand. 
Um, the other benefits to it is, uh, and by the way, I'm going to pause for a second. I don't have any paper printouts or a presentation here, but if you go look up Mighty Patch on Amazon, they do this super, super well. I mean, these guys are crushing it. They have all of the good elements that you really want to be having, but they do have virtual bundles. So go check them out um, if you want to see a couple examples of this. But the other nice kind of benefits here, are, again, you don't need to do any of the heavy lifting. Once you set up that bundle, the only work that you actually have to put in is keeping your individual FBA SKUs in stock. As long as you're in stock on those, after that setup period, you're done. Amazon's going to take care of all the packaging, the shipping, um, all this stuff for that virtual bundle. And Amazon does also allow you to add uh, unique bundle images for the virtual bundle and also customize some of the other elements of the bundle detail page. But ultimately, again, this is all just another free mechanism that we have at our disposal to essentially help stop that scroll. Um, and you know, it's right pretty much uh, in some cases, depending how big your, your monitor is, it might be above the fold. And so this is one of my favorite low lift ways that you can actually go in here. So if you do have uh, brand registry, at least two FBA products in your catalog under the same brand. And, uh, you know, the caveat here, they have to make sense. You don't want to combine two products that make zero sense into a virtual bundle. But as long as they make sense, this is a really low lift way that you can go set this up five, 10 minutes and you're off to the races. So this is one of my favorite things. Um, and one of the things that I do talk to some of the sellers that we talk with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, so I know there's a lot of other speakers out there um, talking today and a lot of other great hacks. If you guys want to get in touch with me, QR codes on the screen. Uh, to my LinkedIn. So feel free to reach out, drop me a message there, or you guys can head over to sellercandy.com. Uh, obviously, I only touched on really virtual bundles, but uh, we help with pretty much any of the annoying stuff that you're dealing with account suspensions, dealing with flat files. Uh, we always like to say, we're going to try to help you never talk to seller support again. So reach out. I'd love to connect with you, talk to you, hear about your business, your pain, all of that stuff. So thanks again. Well, thanks, Ben. That's very cool. I, I would like to know, just so that everyone knows I don't get too busted. Amazon are now in the green room for their uh, for their hack at the end here, so uh, they're listening to you. Uh, so um, uh, well, we will look forward to hearing from them. Uh, from I'm glad them I just got on. mine out of the way. Hopefully, they yeah, exactly that, up. exactly that. So <laughs> mine thanks so much. I think compliant, that. I think. Uh, that was totally TOS, TOS compliant. We were and, and we've and we've totally attacked the whole TOS thing earlier. So that's pretty cool. Uh, thank you so much. I think these virtual bundles really um, give an additional set, you know, additional set of opportunities from same ASINs and same SKUs. Uh, and you know, especially Absolutely. when you're selling abroad, when you don't want to bring perhaps your whole catalog with you, you don't want to bring your whole, you know, your whole set of SKUs and ASINs. Virtual bundles and bundling gives so much more opportunity to take advantage of. So Ben, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate the hacks and uh, and your information will be in the um uh, in the in the white paper afterwards there were some comments uh, for you so you want to head over to the comment section uh, there was somebody there who was uh, eager to get in touch with you so um well uh, thanks so much well we're whistling through it's all going pretty well uh we are uh, i'm very pleased to um introduce our next uh, our next guest omar from margin business is going to talk to us about our connection with the uh, with our between our customer and products. So they, 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 I mean, going really deep into the um, into you know our, the uh, product and direct connections really kind of comes away from the more kind of technological side of uh, of optimizing a sale. So Omar, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, appreciate you uh, you coming on and putting some content in. Uh, tell us about direct connections. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thanks for uh, first of all for having me, uh, Ricky, and me as well. The same. I was uh, quite a while already in, in the back listening to all the hacks, because um, I need to learn as well. So so is everybody who is here. Who's, who is everybody who's, li who's listening? So I'm really um, happy to to hear all these good hacks. Uh, uh, maybe I can as well myself. You know, <laughs> some some of them maybe I didn't know yet, so I can really apply them as well um, to myself. So. Today, um, I will be talking about establishing a direct connection between customer and your product. And why am I talking about this is because it's been 10 years, um, Margin Business actually um, is looking into this. So we began with, local, uh, with translation and moved into localization and added then optimization keywords and all, all, all of this. So just a little, just a little background. Um, why am I always talking about um, these type of uh, um, subjects, which uh, includes uh, as well, you know, to know your customer and actually to understand who you are um, selling to. So um, yeah, let's let's start. I have a few points, uh, a few hacks, let's say it this way. Um, 
So first of all, the, the most important thing is that we found out is that, I mean, everyone knows that. Um, some may be not knowing, but it's understanding your customer avatar. So there is sellers, for example, who just go out there and, and just start selling. And then they ask themselves why, I don't, why I'm not selling. And one of the reasons is why they're not selling is they didn't do enough research, um, the research demographics and preferences. So they didn't identify, identify the cultural nuances and language prevalence. I don't talk about language like language um, in terms of uh, uh, it's language, uh, it's, it's linguistic. Um, uh, I, I'm talking about really to speak to speak to the the marketing um, side of things. So to understand who actually you're going to speak to, first of all in the language, obviously in foreign markets, and then as well in the language of the customer, because there are some customers who wants to be uh, uh, who wants to, to talk in a formal form, be talked to in a formal form, depending on your product actually what you're selling. So. These are the super important points. I mean, uh, th there is a few points, but I'm trying to make it really fast. So um, as well, the impact uh, of language and culture. So I mentioned this already before. So how language the influences the purchasing decisions. So you talk with the customer in their language. You understand what they want. Obviously, you did a big research before. Um, like they already said before, you don't bring your whole catalog into the new market. You really tailor... Um, down everything and maybe give them three, give them four products, see what see what works, see what's not, not working. I mean, you do your research and then if it works, you bring more and more and more products inside. Um, you're checking everything really, really deeply uh, in order to, to make, to, to, to increase your sales in the markets um, you're going to. So I have as well some of the localization strategies um, for the Amazon listings. I mean, you know this already. Um, I want to go a little bit deeper. So the localization of product titles and description. This one we know, but not everyone can do that because there is languages where you need to have native speakers actually who do the keyword research and who do the writing and who understands the product, who have researched the product. So all of these things Margin Business is doing and I mean, you can do it yourself. You can do the work yourself so we can do it even better in that way. So use as well reg region-specific images and graphics. So if you sell from the US, if you, if you go from the US into European Union, into the UAE or into um, Saudi Arabia, you will have to adapt your pictures. Maybe in some, in some cases not, but in most of the cases, yes. So you want to make sure that you understand everyone. So this is... Um, Another hack, I'm, 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 I'm going really fast here because I really want, want you to, to benefit of all of this. So my last and the most important point here is you need to um, build uh, um, trust um, through language. So building the trust through language will as well enable um, customers or your potential customers to um, to see to see through what you're actually selling. So crafting authentic and re retable messaging. So you message the customer. Um, it's like you're messaging the customer. You really speak with them on, on the basis. So you need to really be 100% sure what, 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 what is it all about. So addressing your customer's pain points effectively, utilizing, uh, utilizing social proof and testimonials in local languages. So we talk about the whole listing. We want to make sure that the customer is understanding what you're selling. So here at Margin Business, we really go deep into that. We not only localize the products, we go even deeper. We localize with the keywords in order for you to sell more. Because you know what is all this about? What I just talk about? If you don't sell more, it's just a it's just a pretty service. Uh, what you what you do? No. At the end, what we want we want to sell more. I want to sell more because I'm testing it on my own listings, and what what I found out is that these keywords, if they they only they only work if they have been really researched by a native speaker. So I, I, Ricky is already coming up here and I know I, I have a lot more to talk about here, but he, you know, I really, I try to keep it very short, got my points here, um, hope, hope that I made it clear. Um, yeah, Ricky. 
Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's 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 really hard to crush your your whole business and so much of dedication and life into yeah. into five minutes. So I hope that there's more with well, there is. I've already read it. There's uh, there's so much more in the white paper, and I think understanding that whole customer journey is you know a highly advanced end or it's a highly advanced end of selling. Move that into the you know the biggest um uh the biggest selling commune and buying community in the known universe like on amazon when you're selling internationally and you know the, the you know the scale of the complexity and the scale of the opportunity just ex just 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 explodes doesn't it so yeah i mean and and but you know the, the key thing that we tell to our we tell to our customers all the time when they're growing internationally and this is just this is so poignant for you is that once you've got these products once you've got these ASINs and you know that they're successful in your home market, there's such a good, they're going to be successful wherever you move them if you understand how you can connect to the customer. So sure, you know, when we, we do feasibility studies with clients and they, you know, they want to sell cowboy spurs for cowboy boots or gun racks for a pickup truck, they might only be valid in the US. Uh, and uh, and there'll be, there'll, there'll be other products which are very, very specific to, re, you know, regionally, but fundamentally the opportunity remains so omar thank you so much there's as i say there's more information in the white paper um that will follow follow through so really appreciate you giving your insight and clearly your passion for the customer journey there is coming through thick and fast so thank you so much for joining us well the next up uh we we're starting to talk a little bit more about another region we touched a little bit on saudi arabia we touched a little bit on uae so it'd be interesting now to, uh, to we've, and earlier on, uh, if you've been watching from the beginning, you would have known that we talked about Japan. So um, I'm going to ask Whitney to join us from Acquisit. Uh, so Whitney, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for behaving yourself in the green room. I've been keeping an eye on you. Make sure you, you've, be, you've been behaving. That's all good. Not too much drinking and partying. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Um, and um, let me just move the slide thank on there. Thank you for having me. Yeah, let's talk about non-local non-local agencies because you this is this is very topical. You can get it so wrong if you're not at home, can't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Actually, from past experience, I noticed that a lot of Amazon agencies that are not necessarily local tend to uh, use a one-size-fits-all kind of approach when it's time for them to support their client, like move to other countries. So that's something that could work, actually, if you are trying to say, for example, you're a European country, yeah, you're trying to expand to another European country. I would say the principle of it would be more or less similar. But when it's time for you to go to a completely different region, let's just talk about, I don't know, like Asia or the Gulf, then this is when you need to make sure that um, you, you actually cater to the specifics of that specific area. So today, the hack that I want to share is more of a uh, three-layered hack. Um, ooh, sorry about that. Um, some things that you would need to keep in mind when it's time for you to support your clients or even for you if you're your own brand, um, when it's time for you to go to the MENA region. So that would be the UAE or KSA. And the first thing I want you to keep in mind is um, what I want you to do is not to turn a blind eye on content, and that would be in Arabic. So yes, it's true that a lot of the queries that we would see here in the UAE um, are in English, but in Saudi Arabia, you would have a lot of Arabic. And making sure that you have content that is search engine optimized um, for your Amazon products and your product detail pages and your brand store and your A+, plus, um, is going to be very, very, very critical for your success there. So your content needs also uh, Arabic, like Omar mentioned, is a difficult language. So you need to make sure that the people that take care of that for you are native speakers. It can be very tricky and there are very like small things that you can miss if you don't have that native level of, uh, of um, content. Yeah. And of course, you should also expect your keywords to be uh, popping up like in Arabic because it's a country where you have two languages. Yes, Arabic is the first language, of course, but you have a lot of queries in English. So making sure that you have both languages as I would say a default setting is going to be very critical to your success when it's time for you to go there. The second thing I need you to do after you're taking care of your content and your localization. Um, and actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw um, Yana also in the lineup for that. So I'm sure she would back me on this one for content. So the second thing you need to do is uh, kind of make a short list of all the events that would make the most sense for you in your product category. The way you can see it is in here we have what I like to say three levels, three different layers of events, of marketing events on Amazon. 
Um, and that would also be the case for Noon, which is another platform that's very critical to the area. Um, and the first level is events that we all know of, like Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Prime Day, and things like that, that globally are very popular and all of us like take part um, in, in these events. So here, yeah, second level for you is going to be um, events that uh, everybody knows of, but are not necessarily as important, um, for example, in Europe. And I'm talking about here, 11-11, Singles Day, yeah? So typically in Asia and also here, we can see that we have uh, um, really good results during these events. Sales are going well, CPC is increasing, of course. Um, so that's the second layer here. And the last one is typically events that are specific to the area. And I'm talking about Ramadan and Eid. For you to make sure that you have this list, this, this very like full list of all the events that would matter for you, for your product category, is going to be very critical for your success as well, because the last point um, here is based on these two things. Now that you have your content and your list, the last thing you want to do is to adjust your budget. You do not want to go into um, a market without knowing that there's an extra event or there's Ramadan and Eid and many other events throughout the year. And you don't have you falling short on your budget for you to not be visible during these events is not good at all. It's a growing um, market. It's an emerging market where it's typically right now, if I can say, a first arrive, first served. So for you to not show your face, for you to not be optimized, for you to not really follow, I would say, the best practices to the T is going to be damaging for you and for your growth. So if you want to have a rapid growth, I would say these are the three main hacks, three main um, pieces of advice I can, uh, I can share with you. And of course, I'm always happy to support all the brands and all the, um, yeah, the groups that are interested in to expand into the MENA region, of course. So supporting you from a full scope, from your content to your advertising, we're here for that. Whitney, thank you so much. So we've talked about now uh, UK, we've talked about Europe, we've talked about yeah. Japan, we've talked about the MENA region uh, so we're really romping through the Amazon marketplaces. You yeah. can't see it because it's off camera, but I've got on a whiteboard uh, a list of all the Amazon marketplaces uh, on so whiteboard many. behind me <laughs> to, um, uh, of how we can help sellers to expand to these markets and grow their sales into those regions. So mm -hmm. uh, that's a very, it's a very important and indeed very um, upcoming uh, expanding sector of the of the uh, of the world Absolutely. to be selling on. So, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate thank your you content. for having me, uh, and uh, look forward to some the, the more information in the the white paper later. So, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. We're keeping it. We're keeping things going uh, thick and fast. Very excited now to um, add in Fatos from Maximes. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, lifestyle videos and. Uh, and listing images. So putting the images uh, images onto our products is what's helping us to sell online. Uh, there's some real advances. We talked about AI. We talked about um, uh, about smart selling. Uh, but our content and what we're showing uh, about buyers is the key to how we're engaging. So Fatos, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, tell us a bit about lifestyle videos and, and, and conversions. Thank you for having me, Ricky. Um, so I'm Fatos. I'm the founder of Maximaze. We are a listing optimization agency. Um, I'm also a private label seller in the US market. So, you know, I can see it as a seller as well as um, being on the agency side. So we're here to create high converting listings for our clients. And we, we build listings from the ground up. But, but specifically what I'm, what I'm speaking about today is the importance of lifestyle images and lifestyle videos. Um, why do those things matter? Um, conversion is king, as we know, and quite a few um, of the other presenters have, have already spoken about conversion. Um, it is so important because PPC is getting more expensive. And, you know, we want to make the most of every single person that actually lands on our listing. So we want to make sure that we convert. And also, again, the, the whole flywheel effect, you know, the more a listing converts, the more it's going to get shown, the more we're going to sell and so on and on and on and on it goes. So um, lifestyle images. So 
for us, um, when we're quite often when clients come to us, we do a listing audit, we look at their listings. And one of the things that time and time again we find um, is being overlooked is the importance of having high quality images with real human models in a lifestyle setting showing the product in use. So this applies both um, to still images and to videos. Um, it is so important because shoppers are making decisions a lot. A lot of it is the emotional side of it, not so much the rational. Of course, they're making rational buying decisions, but the emotional side of it is what is going to close the deal in most cases. And if you can show a product in use, an actual human being using it, show their faces, their emotions, then you're making it relatable. So the shopper can actually, um, they can visualize how this product is going to benefit them, how it's going to help them, how it's going to fit into their lives. Um, so, you know, really, really can't overstate the importance of lifestyle images and videos. And videos as well um, are engaging. You know, they will keep people on the page for longer. So again, that has the advantage that A, um, the longer they're on the page, the, the greater the chance that they're going to buy because they're getting drawn in, they're interested in the content. But also, again, longer time on page means that the listings get shown up more and more often. So the way that we approach um, the way we build Amazon listings has actually got a lot to do with my background because prior to being in the Amazon world many, many years back, I was also in retail. And, you know, when I started building my own Amazon listings, I just sort of stopped and took a step back and thought, you know, this is a virtual medium that I'm selling product in. But if, if I was selling this in my physical shop, how would I be doing it? What, what can we do? So, you know, the obvious thing is, you know, in a physical shop, you've got sales assistants, you've got people there who can inform you about the product and talk to you about the product. Um, and the difference when you're buying a product online is there isn't the human being there to talk to you. So essentially, your images and your videos are taking on that role. So through your images, adding in the right infographics and, you know, your videos with the right taglines showing, showing the product in use, the advantages, the benefits, all of that, you've got to somehow replicate how you would have done that in a bricks and mortar store and do it in an online setting. So this is, this is essentially, you know, where I think a lot of our strength comes in and a lot of feedback that we get from our clients that say, you know, wow, this is just, it's been a game changer. It's really transformed our business. It is very much about that emotional engagement with the shopper. And so, you know, the, the whole lifestyle images, we carry them through into the A plus content as well into the storefront. Um, like I said, it's, I can't overstate the importance of having real human beings showing the product in use in a real lifestyle setting. Patos, thank you so much. I don't know if you, how many of you uh, here and how many watching were able to see the Hack Series uh, 2. In Hack Series 2, we had a hack from... Uh, and I'm saying this because I was joking earlier on about the, with the fact that we hadn't talked about AI, which was creating... Uh, live uh, video and photo content using AI to describe uh, can you put me a uh, a blonde 10-year-old child holding my product uh, sitting on a beach or something like that and, and creating uh, that kind of very vivid live content uh, by using AI uh, and machine learning. So there's lots of ways of creating what you're suggesting there. So there's really, there's, you know, it doesn't need to be a really expensive or time-consuming way of presenting your ASINs. Um, so thank you so much for, uh, for your, for your points there. And thank you so much for, uh, for the content, which will help, uh, sellers to, uh, to reflect a little bit on the types of photos and the types of content that they're, that they're putting out from their pro from the, uh, from their pro products, especially when we then lay that over and above 
international sales and selling into new markets on top of that and you know the deeper the deeper end of optimizing your photos and uh, and lifestyle for particular regions and it was mentioned um just previously about how um Whitney mentioned that in you know in the in the in Saudi Arabia for instance you might have different completely different photos um, um than you would do do elsewhere so uh Fatos thanks very much more content of course in your white paper and a QR code there to connect on uh, online so going to move the show on i'm 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 whistling around the cocktail party here guys this is just like it's like a a massive pot of industry experts i can't wait to move from one place to the other so forgive me if i'm seeing anybody off too fast but i'm just so excited to move on to the next place and that next place is with uh mave from from penny uh, black so mave thank you so much for joining us hello uh, you in here um and we're going to talk about uh, we're going to continue along Let's talk about the customer journey and customer loyalty in particular. So tell indeed. us about unboxing. Everyone knows about unboxing, but this is a whole topic itself. It is indeed. Thanks, Ricky. And also, yeah, Fatosh gave me a great segue here talking about how we can emotionally connect with customers and the digital experience. We're going to talk about how we emotionally connect with them with the unboxing experience and how that's going to unlock your customer loyalty. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I'm Maeve and I'm from Penny Black. Um, at Penny Black, we use unboxing moments to enable brands to create highly personalized marketing campaigns that drive customer loyalty. So that's what our hack is about today. How to use your unboxing experience to drive customer loyalty. Why is this such an important hack and why you should, your ears should be pricking up? Um, is well, one, because we know, and as Fatosh mentioned, emotionally connected customers drive more revenue. If your customer is emotionally connected, they're far more likely to make a repeat purchase, equaling more revenue. The unboxing moment and the unboxing experience is the only physical touch point you have now with your customer. Um, and it's also the only time that you have your customers 100% undivided attention. So making it the perfect time to connect with them emotionally. It's a real opportunity to make them feel something and encouraging and incentivizing them to make a repeat purchase. Um, so how do you take advantage of this perfect opportunity to build connections? Well, by using tools like Penny Black, you can create highly personalized inserts that go directly into your package. These inserts will not only delight your customer, but as a consequence, they'll motivate them to go on to make more repeat purchases. Um, how are they performing? Especially flyers have been around for a while, right? But what about highly personalized flyers? How are they performing? Um, well, for context, so um, highly personalized inserts, they actually generate, um, it's 1.8% conversion rate. And like to give a bit of context to that, that's 11 times higher than a post-purchase email marketing campaign. And um, further, on average, up at the minute, we're seeing that they're driving an additional 2.20 per insert in additional revenue, which is amazing. Um, so really, it's an untapped market that's going to drive long, meaningful customer loyalty. So I have a few examples that I prepared earlier um, to make these come to life for you. So this is an example um, of these are all three of these are different types of examples of campaigns that real brands are using with Penny Black at the minute to drive meaningful connections. Uh, one of them, for example, here um, is with Paul Valentine. They are a jewelry brand and their personalized insert offers new customers an exclusive discount only for new customers. Um, another example is Burden Blend. So they're a tea company and they are using their personalized insert to tailor the insert to exact the exact product the customers bought. So in this example, John has bought matcha powder. So they've sent him a recipe for how to make a matcha latte with his powder. And then finally, my final example is from Surrey. So they're a sustainable toothbrush brand and they have a referral campaign live. So as you can see, John, again, um, he's been online shopping a lot, clearly, um, has a personalized referral code that he can use to share with loved ones. So friends and family. And we know that friends and family and consumers trust recommendations from people they know. And we're actually seeing this campaign drive 
up to and over four pounds in re additional revenue per recipient. Um, so I think, yeah, to conclude my hack today, it's just that you, it's time to realize your unboxing experience is it's your newest marketing channel and it's time to grasp that opportunity. Thanks. Do you know, if I if I received a personalized uh, flyer in my uh, in, in my package, I would be uh, very, very excited. I haven't received one of those. Yes. So I'm looking forward to getting a, a Penny Black um, personalized message in one Coming of my packages. Soon, and I, I order a lot of stuff online, so uh, um, much to my wife's discontent. But if you're listening <laughs> earlier, I'm going to be ordering on Thursday evenings. That's when I'm going to take the iPad so she can't order cosmetics because that's the plan. <laughs> so on Thank Friday, you. next day delivery, you'll have your Is it, Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, thank you so much. That was very insightful and, uh, you know, and, and very cool. We're, we, we're so deep, aren't we, here into these incremental gains that can help you improve the customer experience, improve your conversion, exactly. improve the way that you're doing things. So this is super cool. Thank you so much for joining yeah. us. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening. Take care or morning. Bye. So refill your glasses, assuming you're not in California and it's halfway through in the morning. Refill your coffee uh, because we are moving on. Um, we are moving on to the mighty Daniel from Seller Logic. Oh, Daniel and I have created content before. I'm very excited to um, uh, to have Daniel join us for the event. We're talking about Amazon's uh, small and light program, which uh, for a lot of people is the mainstay of what they're doing because of the type of content that's being sold on Amazon. I know in our 3PL warehouse, so much stuff's going out on, on small and light. So um, there's some real benefits to be had here, Daniel. Thanks for joining us. And, and talk us about your hack. Thanks, Ricky. Um, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. And also congratulations on the format that you guys have with uh, with the hackathon. I've seldom seen a format be so successful from the first episode onwards. So yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And um, yeah, basically, let me just start off. Like, I, I guess I have like a five minute window to talk about the small and light. I think I'll be through with this in like a minute or so. But uh, let me just take the time to maybe introduce a little bit what Seller Logic does. We are a software company from... Uh, from Germany, and we specialize on software for Amazon sellers to enable uh, sellers to sell more successfully. Uh, we have a price optimization tool called the Repricer. So if you want to increase your buy box share to gain more visibility, that's the tool you would like to use. Um, we have a reimbursement claim tool called the Lost and Found. So if you're using Amazon FBA and you know there's a lot of errors going on with your products in an Amazon FBA warehouse and you're not getting reimbursed for them proactively by Amazon, we can also help you with that in a very simple and effective way. And we also have a business analytics tool, which helps you sell more profitably. But the thing is the hack that I have for you today has absolutely nothing to do with, uh, with any of those tools. Uh, the thing is, I'm going to be straightforward with you. I have never sold a single item on Amazon, never, not one, but I'm, I, I'm just a marketing guy that writes, that writes blog articles in German and English, and sometimes appears in front of, in front of the camera. Um, but we do have a lot of people at Seller Logic who work at Seller Logic who have sold copious amounts of stuff on Amazon and continue to do, uh, to, to do so. And th those are the people that I always approach when I'm like, uh, for example, for this hackathon, I was like, hey, uh, I went to Anna Marie, who is one of our uh, one of our um, one of my colleagues, and I was like, hey, listen, I uh, I got invited to the GE hackathon. Like, do you have a hack that you might want to like communicate to the people there? She was like, Donnie. One thing for sure that I would like to have known once I, when I was coming up was that there is a small and light program. If you sell over Amazon FBA, there is a small and light program. You can just simply Google it. You can also find it on Seller Central, actually, but you can just Google Amazon small and light, Amazon FBA small and light program. And what happens there is you can enroll uh, as many products as you want. As a, the requirement is, of course, is that they fulfill the um, the necessities. One is that they're not allowed to be sold, or I think, above 11 euros and of course uh, the the weight and the size are are a factor but what happens if if you can enroll those um those things is that um you will be able to sell at a reduced delivery fee over amazon fba and once anna marie told me that i was like are you sure that's like eligible as a hack because everybody on there is going to be like saying super elaborate stuff and she's like danny danny trust me say that because once she started using it she uh, she sells i think she sells art supplies and um she has been saving i think over 40 percent 40 like four zero 40 percent on fba costs so far and what you can do with that is of course you can go ahead and um uh, make your products 
uh, more cheaper and uh, thereby like get more sales, get more visibility. Or of course, what you can also do is you can just like increase your margin with that, which to me also sounds like a, like a sound option. Um, yeah. So basically that's my hack. Ricky, back to you. <laughs> well, Daniel, thank you. I, I think, you know, it, it, it's some, something like small and light is something which is very valid to people that have got those specific types of products. Yeah. So, uh, but for those people that are selling products, which, which might be eligible and, mm. you know, it may well be that Martina from Amazon, um, who specializes in prime, uh, who's, who's on in a few slides time, We'll be able to um, uh, answer if there's any questions on that front. But for certain, um, if you are selling light products and you're not on that program because it's not been suggested to you, sometimes some of these incentives and schemes are dug so deep into Seller Central uh, yep. and getting hold of them is um, uh, is revelationary. You know, if you can yeah. save yourself 40 percent, that's business right. changing. You know, exactly. so for anyone who is in that situation, that's all very, very cool. So yeah. uh, very, a very valid hack. A very valid hack specifically yep. for people who don't know about it so for those people who are throwing back on their chair and going hey man i knew that of course we know about small and light. <laughs> that's not the case yeah <laughs> that's not the case when we talk about people uh, selling their products in the uk and eu and everyone says oh of course we know we can go right. to the eu only two percent of amazon sellers sell in the uk and the eu so right. there's a lot more people out there who are missing out on these things so Absolutely. thank you so so much for joining thank us. Thank you also, Ricky. Um, thank you so much for having me. And also, uh, give my best, give my best to, to Ant and to Hannah. Um, if, if I uh, shall if do, yeah. Good. All shall the best. Do. You guys. Thank you. Right. Uh, we'll we'll um uh we'll, I'll leave um uh I'll leave Daniel's QR code up there whilst I just get myself sorted out for the next slides because we have. Well, possibly the coolest business of the whole, uh, the coolest business name of the whole, uh, of the whole hack. But we have joining us now, Josh Hadley from, uh, are we Ecom Breakthrough? That's right. Happy That's to be pretty here. That's pretty badass. Ricky. Thank you, Josh, for joining us. Hey, thanks for allowing me to be here. I'm going to try to present my screen. Can I present? Uh, only if we, you've uploaded it first. If I've uploaded it. Yeah, I've only if you it uploaded right it here. first. If you click on present, there you go. That's you. Is Can you, you see my screen? Uh, no, no. You need to. You need to upload. Uh, click on present, and then and then uh, slides and uploads. You have to be on there. So that might be a bit tricky. Stop screen share. You can't see my screen then. No. Shows a slide. Oh, here we go. Hold on. How about that? There, there we, go. we go. Now we're That's talking. It. The technology is involved. It. All right. Here we go. All right, I'm going to enlarge this and we'll dive in. So how would y'all like to increase your average order value on Amazon, influence the frequently purchased together section and help new products gain sales faster and gain more real estate on your product detail pages all while using a white hat hack. I'm gonna introduce all of that to you today, but first, who am I? My name is Josh Hadley. I'm the father of three and a husband to a very beautiful wife. Um, I'm an eight-figure brand owner. We've been selling on Amazon since the fall of 2016, and I am also the host of the Ecom Breakthrough podcast. I actually had the chance to have Andy on the show as well, so tune into the podcast if you haven't. All right, so I'm going to be introducing to you today the one-click add-to-cart white hat hack. So it's a tongue twister, but uh, is well worth your time. All right, so what is this white hat hack that I'm talking about? So as you can see here, I've taken the screenshot. Apple's doing a great job of this. Um, take a look at their MacBook listing and then check out it over here in this yellow box. It says add an accessory. And there's two different accessories that you can click on, right? Um, the beautiful thing about this is that the customer never needs to navigate away from the page or the main product that they are actually shopping for. So here's a quick little video demo of how somebody can easily add products from that accessories feature into their cart. So you can see real quick, I added four products to my cart from one single detail page. And that's game changing, right? That's going to be able to allow you to influence and increase your average order value. So the big question is, you know, what's the value here and how do I actually go about doing this? So increasing your average order value is going to be game changing for your business because you go from selling a product at this MacBook at $1,200 
to having an average cart value of over $1,400, right? That makes the PPC game that you're trying to spend money on and your tacos, it makes it a lot more efficient. Okay, you also get to influence the frequently purchased together section. So if people are adding your accessories to the product that they are shopping for, obviously Amazon's going to recommend it as, hey, consider buying these things together and again, occupying more real estate on your product detail page. In addition, you are going to be able to promote new products by adding them as an accessory. So even if you have a thousand SKUs, and you are launching a new product that you know it's not technically an accessory for any of your other products. But if you've got a thousand other SKUs, guess what you get to do? You can add it as an accessory to all of those 1,000 SKUs. Even if it's related or unrelated, Amazon doesn't really care. Um, and you can see the beautiful thing about this is that the customer can click on that product, okay? And it will pop up this little, I guess, pop-up screen that you can see here and the customer never needs to navigate away from the main product that they came shopping for and so again you're not going to lose sales by distracting your customer instead it's bringing a lot more eyeballs to a newly launched product in addition you obviously get to gain more real estate on your product page so by including multiple accessories look how much further down apple was able to push down those product targeting ads, right? We all see the competitors that show up and those sponsored listings right underneath the buy box. Well, guess what happens when you add accessories? You get to make your product detail page that much longer and make it harder for the, the customers, I guess, to see those other competitors. All right, so this sounds great, but it probably takes way too much time and effort, right? False, all right? It is as simple as filling out this simple spreadsheet where you can see here, List your ASIN and say, all right, what are the ASINs I want to have listed as my accessory for this ASIN? And that's it. That is all you have to do, okay? Literally, you're just adding your ASINs to the spreadsheet. So go ahead. Here is this, here's a, the QR code. Everybody can grab this simple spreadsheet template, okay? And then all you need to do is you're going to email this spreadsheet template over to your SaaS core representative. So right now, that is the only way that this hack really works is if you have a strategic account services manager, the SaaS core uh, representative at Amazon. Um, if you're not in that program, again, I would encourage you to be in that program. I, I feel like it's kind of paying the mafia at the end of the day because you get a little bit better customer or I guess seller support from Amazon, you can escalate cases. You've got somebody inside Amazon, I guess, working on your behalf to an extent, but uh, I consider it like it's paying the mafia. But one of the perks is that you do get benefits and access to some of these other kind of like hidden features in Amazon that, you know, an ordinary seller does not get. So that is my one click add to cart white hat hack. Well, Josh, thank you so much. That uh, certainly uh, gives us some real insight there, some QR codes, which I hope everyone was able to snap as quickly as they could because they weren't, they won't be in the white paper. I was just, I was looking through to see if they were in the white paper. They won't be in the white paper. Perhaps you could, um, uh, people have the opportunity to, uh, to grab those. So that's very cool. Josh, thank you so much for joining us and thank you so much for your insight. Really useful uh, incremental gains there, really adding on. If we're stacking these hacks up and these tips, uh, we're sure to make an effect on every seller that watches this both now and into the future. So thanks so much for joining us. Well, look, I'm whistling on. Um, I, I mentioned earlier on that, uh, that Amazon were in the green room and they really are. So um, wanted to uh, welcome Martina uh to the to the show uh there's only there's a, there's a there's a couple of hacks left and uh so i'm excited to have um uh, to have martina join us right from the the horse's mouth as it were it's a, it's a very english phrase i'm sorry if they don't, and they, now overseas watchers don't understand what that means but uh thank you so much for joining us thanks and hello everyone glad to see many initiatives around amazon and glad to see it um so my name is martina i'm a senior partnership manager uh here in the buy with prime team at amazon uh, thanks for hosting me and thanks for the opportunity to talk about this new exciting program at amazon called buy with prime 
Um, let me, oh, thanks, Ricky. Um, let me start saying that at Amazon, we are customer obsessed. So with the e-commerce growing, I mean, with the e-commerce industry growing, we want merchants to use, who use our services to be successful, whether that's on Amazon or off Amazon. And off Amazon, this is the key of today. So shoppers expect a certain experience when they shop online today, we all know this. And we want, I mean, they want better value, more convenience, outstanding customer service. And since shoppers want more, that means e-commerce brands need to do more. Um, and we spent time uh, last year, I mean, in the last few years, reviewing certain metrics when it comes to the shopping online journey. And let me start with a couple of metrics, the most important one for us. Um, so according to the 2021 report from McKinsey Company, 77% of shoppers say that they will take their business elsewhere if they receive a poor customer experience. The same results state that 49% of shoppers abandon their cards at the checkout if they feel shipping rates are too high. And the Comscore state of retail find out that 55% of shoppers say free shipping is the most important factor in making an online purchase. So free shipping matters. And here comes Buy With Prime. So Buy With Prime is a new checkout solution of Amazon directly on the merchant website that helps e-commerce businesses convert more shoppers with fast, free delivery and a checkout experience that millions of customers um, love. Mm, let me explain it better. So Public Prime um, handles payments, processing, and something new that, I mean, it's uh, the exciting part of Public Prime is about storage, packing and fulfillment and shipping of all your buy with prime orders that means spending less time navigating complex transport and fulfillment issues and more time focusing on your brand on your customer and the value um, at your company um, but we are talking about metrics we talk about a uh, conversion rate um, so public prime has been shown to help merchants increase a shopper conversion by an average of 25 percent which is based on the average increase in shoppers who place an order with Buy With Prime uh, when this was an available option um, and the, between among all the other options versus when it was not during the same period. So for merchants, they're seeking to scale and grow that average increase of 25% um, is a powerful number. And let me say also that uh, with Buy With Prime merchants not only get to provide the prime shopping benefits on their own website, but they also receive the prime shopper information, name, email address, shipping address, and even the phone number. So this clearly allows them to maintain direct relationships with the customers, elevate their customer service, and further build a community around the brand. That I mean, as you know, is not very easy on Amazon.com. Um, but thanks, Ricky, for um, for the slide. Uh, um, this is a demo just for you to get a visual idea around Buy With Prime. Uh, let's do a very quick walkthrough. And Ricky, I know you're there, so um, I'm not on time. Um, so when a shopper views uh, one of your products, they see the standard checkout options, but they also see the Prime logo, the delivery promise, and the Buy With Prime button. Buy With Prime branding signals to Prime members that they can order products in an easy and fast familiar way. So after selecting Buy With Prime, shoppers simply sign in to their Amazon account. The checkout menu automatically fills in in the shoppers uh, prefer payments and shipping details from their Amazon account. They go ahead, they select place order and that's it. So a personalized confirmation mail from merchant business is sent to the customer with a link where they can actually view their order and track their package. So this is a customer experience that today is available um, for US based merchants. Um, so it was short and um, hopefully it was clear, but we're happy to um, get any, any question later. It was a uh, spectacular Martina. Thank you. And is this, is this available in all countries now, or is this something that's coming soon? Mm, can, I think I can answer this, but it's available, uh, for us based merchants. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so th this, th this is, uh, this is an excellent, uh, tip then because this helps 
our Amazon sellers who have watched right through the tax series here for series uh, for season three to really see what's coming, uh, you know, and how, uh, you know, further, um, uh, further support and, 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 and things will be, can be added to, to help them to sell. So it's really, really useful. Martina, thank you so much. And I get, I think one of your colleagues is, um, uh, is in the message uh, on in the messages in case anyone has any questions Absolutely. surrounding uh, yeah, uh, surrounding there. So thank you so much for joining us, and thank you so much for bringing uh, Byward Prime to us. Thank you. So um, let me uh, just slide back. Uh, oh, there was that's just me. So we'll slide um, back one because there's one last uh, once one, one last super famous Carbon Six character who hasn't joined us yet. So this is the ultimate end goal uh, of the hack series ver um, series three. Uh, David Williams from Carbon Six, and we met, uh, met David and I met early in the year when we did a kind of virtual grow your business online um, uh, called Grow Your Business Online in the UK and the EU. Um, in uh, which state did we meet, David? We were in New York. We were in New York. Yeah, so we met in New York, yes. and um, uh, he, uh, David was able to help us with. Uh, growing some clients uh, who uh, wanted to bring their business to the UK and the EU. So I've uh, I've already heard all about uh, the uh, the software background that David's had, and I, I know that this um, off Amazon traffic and uh, is just as important. And of course, when you're using a three PL internationally, it doesn't matter where you sell, whether you sell to Amazon or or off Amazon. So uh, David, thank you so much for waiting around, being in the green room for some time now. So we're a little bit behind. So I appreciate you waiting around. Yeah, thanks for having me, Ricky. Um, nice to see you again. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah, my name is David Williams, and um, I'm with Carbon6 on the partnership side. Um, I I've done a lot of startup stuff in my life. I've been doing my own startups for about 12 years before joining Carbon6. And as of January, I've came into the e-com space. And wow, what a ride it's been. Um, so Carbon6, for those who don't know, um, are an aggregator of sorts. We, Rather than aggregating brands, we aggregate software tools for brands. So we've got everything from uh, inventory management tools to reimbursement tools to uh, alerting tools. Um, and everything in between. But the, the one product or tool that we're most excited about now is um, a tool called Pixelme. And this originally started off as sort of a link builder, but it's grown, uh, it's grown so far since then. Um, over the past four or five months, it's sort of developed. We, we've kind of improved this. We, we've proved this playbook out internally, and now we're kind of bringing it out to the world as of about two months ago. But the whole idea is we are bringing off Amazon traffic directly to your Amazon product listing as an organic ranking strategy. And um, through this uh, sort of slide deck, I'm going to go through step by step on exactly um, what we do. And you can choose to, you're not required to use Pixelme. This is simply a playbook, um, but we've kind of built in all the features and functionality that you need to launch this seamlessly. Um, so here's a quick explanation of Pixelme. We sit between Amazon and then all of the off Amazon platforms. And then we pull in data from Amazon. We pull in you know, all of your sales data, your, um, your keyword data, your conversion data. Uh, and then we also pull in ads data from Google, Meta, TikTok, and more. Um, we can create links that you can use with influencers and pull in performance metrics into Pixelme. And we sort of marry the data uh, into your Amazon data all within the Pixelme platform. Uh, and it, so it's pretty clear that Amazon loves external traffic. There's sort of a lot of data uh, that explains that they want you to bring external traffic into your product listing, uh, which makes sense. You're bringing more traffic onto the Amazon platform. Um, they've got a brand referral bonus now. Um, I, I know it's live in the United States, and I think they're expanding this globally as well. So uh, if you send traffic to your product listing from off Amazon and that traffic converts, uh, then they will reimburse you 10% of the fulfillment fees. So instead of paying 15%, you're now paying 5%. So they're incentivizing you uh, to bring in traffic to the platform. And so here's our sort of ranking strategy step by step. Um, let's take a pickleball product, for example. Um, now, typically what we look for before we uh, we advise people to move forward with Pixelme is that you have a good product already. Um, Pixelme can't take a bad product and make it good. Um, we can take a good product and we can add a lot of fuel to the fire. So typically we ask for 4.3 stars or better, um, and it's priced in line with the market. Um, and it's sort of something that people uh, impulsively purchase. It's not something that, you know, like a diamond ring where people are going to do a lot of research before they make a purchase. It's something that they sort of, you know, they're looking for it, they find it, they buy it. Um, and now this is what the Pixelme platform kind of looks like. So if you just add the link to your product, um, Pixelme will pull in all of the Amazon account details, the product description details, et cetera. 
Um, and then we can pull in four or five competitive ASINs um, that are sort of priced in line with your product. Um, so here, here, th this slide is just showing you step-by-step -step through the actual platform. Um, so Pixelme will pull in your product. Um, what we then do is it, it pulls in all the different parameters from, let's say Google, we're going to launch a campaign on Google. We're going to bring external traffic from Google to your Amazon listing. So Pixelme will pull in all the campaign parameters. You'll have to set a campaign name, a start date and an end date for the campaign, a location where you want the ads to run in. So in this case, United States, which language do you want the ads to run in a daily budget? We recommend starting off with $25 per day. Um, and then we split that $25 across four or five different exact match keywords that we want to go after on Google. Now, what we also allow you to do is add retargeting pixels, uh, which further drives down um, the blended ACoS. So if you have, like, if you do advertising on Facebook and, and Twitter and Google and Pinterest or wherever you do advertising, you can add in those targeting pixels here. Um, and then in the future, if somebody clicks through your Google ad to your Amazon product page and they don't convert, then you can actually retarget them on other platforms to bring them into your sales funnel. Um, and then right at the bottom, we have this thing called a performance booster. Uh, we recommend that you turn this on. Um, we find about three times uh, better results if you turn on the performance booster. And what this does is it switches the Google campaign to optimize for conversion rather than optimize for click. So at the beginning of the campaign, we're optimizing for click, hit, click. We're bringing a bunch of traffic to your listing. We're monitoring and measuring. And once we learn a, a bit more about consumer behavior, uh, we feel more comfortable to optimize for conversion. And so what we have here is a uh, view keyword suggestions. And we've actually built in several of the other Carbon 6 tools into the Pixelme platform to pull in keyword suggestions. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Um, we pull in um, four to five competitive ASINs, which you'll see here at the top. Um, these ASINs are ones that are ranking really well uh, in your niche. Um, they have good reviews uh, and they're at a similar price point. And what Pixelme does is we sorry, this is a little bit small. I don't know if I can make it bigger, but um, so what it does is we evaluate it on five metrics. So in the first column is the keyword column. We pull in all the different keywords that are driving traffic and sales to this basket of products. So your product and your five competitive products, here are all the different keywords. So pickleball paddle, pickleball, pickleball, pickleball paddle, pickleball paddles, pickleball set, best pickleball paddles. And it goes on. There's hundreds and hundreds of keywords that are driving traffic. In the next column, we show the Amazon search volume for each of these keywords. We then show your current rank. So for example, for pickleball paddle, pickleball paddle, right number one, there's 9,900 searches on Amazon per month and you are ranked number 34. And one of those five competitors that we pulled in is ranked number one. So this is a good opportunity to sort of bring you into the top 10. And the higher you are, in the search results, the more sales that you will get. And this is all measurable. Um, the next column is we show, yeah, your Amazon competitor rank for each of these keywords. We then show the estimated Google cost per click and then the Google search volume for the same keywords. And what we want to do is go through this list and find three to five keywords that have high volume on Amazon and high volume on Google. And we want to add them to our campaign. And you can do so just on the right hand side by clicking add. So once we add, you know, a few keywords, so in this case, we added pickleball set, pickleball paddle, pickleball and pickleball paddle. And we want to make sure that we do an exact match keyword on Google. We want to get people that are searching these exact phrases in Google before we serve the ad to them that will drive directly to your listing. Now, once we've once we've um, chosen the keywords, uh, the next step is to actually create the Google ad. So for those of you who are familiar with Google ads platform, you know, it could take, you know, hours to come up and create an actual campaign and launch it. Um, we've built some ChatGPT like features into Pixelme where um, ChatGPT will recommend some conversion optimized headlines and conversion optimized descriptive terms to include in your ad. And you can simply create an ad by clicking. So you can click, you know, up here it says click three to four headlines. And then at the bottom one, it says click two to four descriptions. And then uh, pick, uh, Pixelme will actually create the ad for you. So in the ad, you want to make sure that you talk about the features and the benefits. Um, you include the price. You add the word free. You show social proof. You want to make sure that the user who sees this ad is kind of pre-sold on the product before actually clicking through to your product page. Um, and then the next step is to just launch. 
And so the keywords that you target are automatically tracked in the PixelMe platform. We will show you um, where you are in, like where your organic rank is on the Amazon platform when you begin. And then every week we will pull the search query performance reports and we will show you um, your share of the click. We will show you sales from specific keywords and we will show you your change in organic rank over time for these particular keywords that we're going after on Google. Um, and so, you know, right now we have a program, like eventually this Pixel Me is going to be a self-serve program where you can come on, you can add your ASINs, uh, you can run it all yourself. Um, but for now, we're, we run sort of like a health, uh, like a self-serve model where we will take on, you know, four or five of your keywords. We will identify the ones with the largest opportunities. We could take one or two of those keywords and then we can launch a full done for you service for $200 a month. Uh, plus the ad spend that you'll be spending. Um, but we'll take the keywords, we'll do competitive analysis, we'll do keyword research, we'll do search volume analysis on Google, um, we'll create the campaigns, we'll launch them, and then every week we'll have a check-in where we go over results. And the results are, you know, you originally started off at number 50 for this particular high volume search term, and now after the first week you are up to 40, and then over time you will get up to the top 10. Um, and by being in the top 10, it will lead to a lot more sales um, and a lot more money. So th there's a couple of different baskets of products that come into Pixel Me. Um, typically, the low price products are $40 and under. Uh, now, for those products, it's, it's sort of a ranking only strategy. So you're not looking for like a new profit stream from external traffic. Um, the $40, uh, $40 and under, you, we will help you rank them higher in Amazon for products between 40 and 75. Uh, you'll get a ranking strategy and you'll possibly get a new revenue stream. That's a profitable. And for products over $75, you'll get a ranking strategy and a new profit stream um, from off Amazon traffic. And I'm not sure where I am with time here, but there's, you know, we have, we have loads and loads of case studies showing that this works. Um, and, and we have, you know, we've, we, we started doing this about two and a half months ago in the US. Uh, we had sort of like a 20,000 MRR. And now we're up to like, a, we, we 5x that within two months. Our close rate for this product is 85%. So just about everybody that we talk to is interested in trying it. And they're seeing like absolutely incredible results with improving their organic rank. And it doesn't, you don't have to just do this with a product um, that has like a long reputation and a long history of selling on Amazon. Like we can do this to launch brand new products that you don't, that aren't otherwise sold on Amazon before. Um, we can kind of come out of the gate, rank something like just use this to rank it high, like right off the bat. And that Thank is- you. Uh, Th David, thank you. Uh, I'm sure that um, uh, if I just flip back here to uh, this here, I'm sure that if people connect to them, you can help them out with uh, some additional case studies. I'll put them in touch with uh, one of your colleagues that can show them. There's some there's some uh, there's some comments uh, there surrounding Pixel uh, uh, Pixel Me, which um, which are quite positive there in the comments there. So uh, thanks, as there for uh, for making the comments on that front. That's great news. So. Um, uh, yeah, David, thank you so much. That was a great one to finish on, you know, and a, a, a yet another really pivotal little tool that we can use uh, to grow uh, grow online trade. So, David, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for uh, for being patient there and, and waiting until the end. So, appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Well, look, there was 22, 22 of some of the most exciting and powerful uh, e-commerce business building tips that we've had on any of the uh, any of the series that we've done. This is series three. Uh, if you want to see series one and two, they're available online. You can go and find those on our YouTube channel. As I mentioned right from the beginning, we're uh, an e-commerce growth brand. Um, there's some QR codes here just to finish on, which is give you a little bit of information uh, surrounding the things that we do. If you want to take a look at your online trade uh, in uh, in the UK and the EU, if you're already selling. Uh, you can give you for watching this uh, all the way to the end, two hour, two and a half hours. Uh, we'll give you a free account health check to check your uh, listings and see where you could be benefiting from growth. If you're not selling in the UK, in the EU, and you are um, curious about what that might look like, we can also give you a free uh, feasibility study to understand the scope using some of these tools, which we've, uh, which we already heard about. So we'll do some of that hard leg work for you. Uh, if you want to talk to a member of our team to be able to, uh, start launching your growth uh, in time for Q4. It's not too late. Uh, you can get you can start launching now uh, and get yourself in in place for Q4 if you move relatively quickly. So uh, if you if you want if you if you want to talk to anyone uh, on that basis, then there's, a, there's some QR codes there. Loads of QR codes there. 
You've opened a whole bunch of listings. Uh, please connect with these super talented, beautiful, handsome people uh, who are leading and driving growth in our industry and creating tools for e-commerce sellers to help them grow. Please trade with them. Uh, please uh, use them to help with your growth. Uh, and we will be running another hack series in Q4. So do stay in touch. Shortly after this, it might take a few days to pull this together as each of our um, uh, con uh, contributors forward finish off their content. We'll bring through the white paper. I've got the draft version here, which was completed in the last 24 hours. So please uh, wait, wait for that. That'll come into your inbox. Lots of people asking where that's going to come from. Stacks more information there and you can distribute that as you like. Um, it's been absolutely amazing having you on here for the Hack Series. It's been amazing to listening amazing listening to your questions uh, and helping you to grow online. So for now, uh, goodbye and appreciate your time and we'll see you on the next hack series. Thank you very, very much.